Hi everyone, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Thomas Roussel from Pixologic um, and uh, during my live stream I'm working on uh, a fan art of this illustration of Tim Lochner that you can find on ArtStation. Um, I hope you hear me okay because I have in the background my printer which is running then it may be slightly noisy but i have no way to pause it and i really really need to have this printer working then you will understand just after then so far if you didn't follow my previous stream uh, then it was about creating uh, uh, this uh, illustration from uh, from the character to be from Nier Automata, the video game from uh, Platinum Game, uh, Games, sorry, uh, with uh, Square Enix as uh, as a distributor, pro, uh, a producer, etc. Um, then I'm now more on the final stages. Let me switch to uh, the brush. You have so far uh, the figurine, uh, but without the small pod. Uh, as a reminder, uh, I have the pod. Uh, sorry, it's. It's not my usual webcam. I switch the webcam, you will see just after. Um, then this pod is missing because I didn't have the time. To be honest, I was expecting to have way more time to work on this during, during the last days, but I had some issues on my personal life. I had to travel, uh, some ex unexpected travels, then I lost quite some time. Um, anyway, um, I moved forward since the last stream at the end of the live stream that you can find on YouTube, on the Pixologic channel. Um, I did some test prints uh, for the character, for uh, the skirt and um, the... Uh, ah, forgot the name. Uh, come on, Thomas, uh, let me switch. I have the names. Oh, you see, you have the robot here, uh, the pod. Um, I'm looking for the name, the apron, sorry. Uh, the apron, the skirt, just to assemble and I don't know what did I do, but the print has been fine. Uh, you, 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 if you remember, I presented the beginning of the, the print process with my Form 2 at the end of the stream. Unfortunately, uh, I had a, a scale issue. One of the mesh, the apron, was way bigger than it should be. Then I don't know where I mess up, but I mess up. Um, then today, uh, I will just explain some techniques because, in fact, I finished to prepare almost everything for the model. Uh, everything for to be uh, uh, the broom, uh, the apron, the, the base, the small robots, etc. Everything has been done. The only thing which remains to be done is the pod. Then uh, today I will work on the pod and I will spend a little bit of time in the post process. Let me show you some parts. Sorry, it's just on the webcam right now, but I printed, I started to print already some parts, then I have the bust, I have the head uh, as well, you see, uh, uh, like that. Uh, I have multiple parts that I already printed. In fact, I started the print yesterday night. And because I'm printing in 25 microns in terms of layers, uh, for the thickness for each layer, it takes quite some time. Let me just load some photos. And sorry, uh, I had almost no time to prepare this stream, then I may lose some time, time to time. So I, I will sh show you the, the parts uh, again. And after, uh, let me switch to something else. You see, uh, this is my webcam, my other webcam, the good webcam, and I will spend, uh, I hope you hear me okay, uh, I will spend some time uh, uh, to clean, uh, to remove the supports, uh, to show you some parts, to all this post process of 3D printing. Uh, how to send, I will show you which uh, uh, tools I'm using, uh, perhaps some techniques, I don't know. I will try to show everything. Then uh, you will see better, you see the chest here yeah, already, uh, which is just a single part. You see some holes because it has been hollowed. Uh, some parts like this one, you see a lot of holes, uh, which is more in, in this side. You see it has been printed upside down. Uh, it's straight out of the printer. I did nothing else except cleaning uh, these parts. And let me show you some photos. Let me switch to the other screen. Okay, and 
let me go to the good folder. Sorry, I must you to wait just a few seconds uh, because I didn't open them yet. Yep. Okay. Then just few photos. This photo, then it's just from this afternoon. Uh, it's the, the 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 model you just uh, uh, seen on my uh, on my webcam, straight out of the printer. I just remove the build platform from the printer, and this is what you see. Then it's kind of sticky because you have a lot of liquid resin all around the, the model. Uh, you have some bubbles and all these kind of things. Of course, it needs to be uh, uh, cleaned uh, to be uh, just, uh, you need to remove this resin because you have no way to work with that. It's really sticky. You need to, to work with gloves. Of course, it's some chemical materials and you need to be very careful. Um, then the next stage, and I'm sorry, I can't really show you that live because I can't deal with all this chemical product in my office. Uh, I, I don't have the room to do that. I do that in my kitchen, in fact. <laughs> uh, then I can't show you that live. And the second part of the process, of course, is to rinse, to, to clean um, your model in uh, the IPA uh, alcohol. This is a very specific alcohol. Uh, the one I'm using is pure at 99.9% .9 and it's a very pure alcohol and uh, it's just a solvent. It will just uh, 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 clean this liquid resin. Uh, you need to rinse that and move you see this black uh, uh, stuff you just move it up and down just to move your part uh, in the alcohol then to make the alcohol moving all around and then clean the process then you move for approximately 10 minutes like that and after you have another recipient like that with the alcohol as well uh, which is uh, let's say uh, less saturated in your liquid resin and you leave your pieces for an extra 10 minutes and after when you're done this is the stage where you are then um, uh, sending etc for some resin and some time you need to start again this process of cleaning and in between you can cure your resin with uvs you have multiple techniques you can buy some specific hardware which are dedicated to curing the resin for printer which are very expensive or you can buy the um, you know these uh, machines for uh, the nails when you have this uh, uh, this nails in resin and you can buy this uh, this machine for $20, something like that, which are UV tubes, which are working fine. And of course, you have the sun outside, which is uh, free, of course. But when it's at night and raining, it may be problematic. The only problem when you are, uh, uh, you see, this is for uh, uh, this one, for this kind of shape. Um, if you are over curing your resin after it becomes very brittle, then you need to find a good balance and it's not very easy. Then at the stage, of my models, I didn't cure these models, um, these these parts. It's just straight out of the IPA bath. Um, then the resin is still a little bit soft, then it's easier to remove the support at that stage. But after, if you really want to sense for some models, sometimes it's better to cure a little bit your your model. Then I will see uh, what I will do. I think it's hard enough uh, to uh, to work uh, directly. Of course, if you have some questions, some comments, just use the chat for that. Uh, you know, for all of you who are still look at watching me uh, and following my stream, that I can talk a lot. Um, then, uh, this is just a photo, it's better than the webcam, of the print, then just after the uh, IPA bath. Um, and as you can see, it's quite clean at this stage. You see a little bit the layers, but uh, let me check. Right now, what I have on my screen is, uh, let me switch to, I have no full screen mode. No, no full screen mode. Um, for the face, which is in my hands right now. Uh, sorry, it's not very easy with the webcam. The size in the screen is something like six times bigger, five times bigger, then it's way bigger. Then if I just zoom out, I have no way to zoom more than that. Come on. I want to zoom. Okay. I can't zoom. <laughs> I can't zoom out. Sorry, it's not very easy. But when I'm looking with just my eyes, 
Yeah, you see slightly the layers, but a little bit of sanding and even putting some, uh, just applying some primer paint on top of that will just clean everything. This is a good thing about this printer, the Form 2, and there, there is other printer, of course. This is a printer I'm using. Now it's almost ready to be used uh, after the process. And because this is not for production, but just for presentation and demonstration on the trade show, I won't spend a lot of time to clean and sand uh, everything. And the next photo is, okay, uh, now it's time to start a new print. And the print, which is right now in the printer, I still have, I mean, I still have, I started with 20 hours of print. Then I need to be sure that my print will work and it won't be a failure because if I notice it's a failure at half of the time, it means losing 10 hours and I need to finish everything before, I mean, at, at least uh, for the next weekend. And I have one week to finish everything on top of my work, of course. And uh, no, okay, that's all. Okay, then let's go back in the brush. Uh, yes, I think I should have just put the window in uh, in window mode and not just in full screen, just to zoom in. Uh, okay, let's just do that quickly, just to show if I can do it. Let me zoom. Um, let me pick on my screen. Yeah, yeah. You see, the head is approximately that size. Then. You see probably because of the scaling, the layers, but when I see right now with the light, I see them a little bit, but to be honest, it's not that much. Anyway, uh, let's close that. Okay, uh, I will just start to expand. Sorry, this, this stream will be a lot of talk and showing things, not still not sculpting. Uh, to be honest, I have no idea what I will do for the next stream. If I start something totally different, or uh, I don't know if I will have the time to finish that. This is for me an unknown. Uh, let me just remove the live ball and, and go back to this one. Okay. Then what you see right now on screen is the model uh, that I exported for the printer. And I will explain some stuff and after I will switch back to, uh, to the model. And I will switch in solo mode. The goal is to explain you why I did something or not did something else. Uh, why some models, I hollowed some models and why I did not for some other models. Um, you need to keep in mind that this model will be very big. It will be approximately 50 centimeter tall, which is quite big. And, uh, sorry, it was just on the floor. I purchased some glass rods. I don't know if I remember if I showed that the last time. Uh, you see this kind of stuff, which will be between the base and the leg. And you, you see they are quite big compared to my hand. They are 20 centimeters by 5 millimeters for the thickness. And then I will plug that in the base and the other side with the leg and everything on top. Then it will be yeah, pretty big. Okay. Um... Is there a power shutdown that the 3D printer resume or has to start from zero? It has to start from zero, uh, especially uh, uh, SLA printer. There is some FDM printer that you are able to shut down completely uh, uh, and then restart the print. Some of them are able, if there is a power loss, uh, uh, um, uh, a power shutdown to restart, but very few of them. But by experience, as soon as you pause something, you start to have these visible layers and all this kind of stuff. On my side, my printer is plugged on, uh, on an APC and a big one. I can run the printer for 30 minutes uh, without uh, uh, power. I mean, then uh, I'm, I've been very careful. Another reason is not because you are losing time, but also you are losing I mean, resin. Uh, you need to clean the process after. Uh, uh, I mean, it costs money. And, and 10 hours, it costs also money on your uh, resin tank, um, where the silicon layer uh, start I mean, become old and uh, and the laser is burning it. And you need to be very, very careful. Uh, I don't have this resin tank here. I think I trash it. Uh, hold on, let me just check something. I'm sorry, my office is a big mess. Yeah, it's 
that one. You see, what you see right now on screen is a resin tank. This is for the Form 1 or Form 1 Plus, not for the Form 2, but the technique is the same. And you have a part in a range which is just uh, the boundaries of uh, the resin tank. Uh, you have at the end, uh, I mean, at the end, on the bottom, some uh, acrylic. Everything is in acrylic, in fact, um, which is pure transparent where the laser go through. In fact, the resin tank is for the webcam that way, and you have the laser which just go down and then burn everything, I mean burn, just cure the resin, sorry, let me accurate, uh, which is inside. Then the laser just go down and you have the build platform on the top and the resin is cured between this bottom inside and then the uh, build platform or the previous layer. And you see that just for my face, you see that way, there is some white or uh, whiter areas and some spots. I don't know if you see that really with the webcam. Let me switch to uh, this one. Okay, better that way. Uh, you see, you see all these small dots like that. Okay, it's not very easy with the webcam <laughs> just to, to see the good thing. Uh, all you see here are just because the laser just uh, burn, really burn uh, the silicon layer which is inside because you have some acrylic outside but inside you have a silicon layer which is something like four millimeters, three, four millimeters and because it's soft and it helps the peeling process just to remove the previous layer uh, from the, 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 the build platform. And when you have failures, you are having failed print, then of course you are using, I mean, your, 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 your ah, build platform, your build platform, your resin tank, sorry, uh, then become older and older. And because this is kind of white, you have a, um, a loss in terms of quality. You can see some spots. I have some print where I see the small spots because of these small dots. And what you see here are because of uh, support. You will see after, sometimes you have big and long support, then you have the laser going for each layers, for each one on this area. And then the lifetime of the silicone layer uh, becomes shorter and shorter. Of course, you can buy them. Most of the time, um, a resin tank, uh, you can use it for approximately one liter up to two liters of resin. Uh, depending of the resolution. Of course, two liters if you are printing at uh, 100 microns of resolution. In fact, the more layer you print, the shorter the lifespan will be for your resin tank. And uh, you need to be very careful with that. Then that's why I'm, I'm taking care about not, uh, I mean, trying as much as possible to avoid faint prints. And another reason is the frustration which come with it. Okay. Let's go back to that. Sorry for the off topic and let's switch to the Cintiq. Um, okay. Uh, my pen. Okay. Then you see for the bust, you have right now the decimated model. Uh, I won't really explain the decimation perhaps later, but uh, there is nothing, let's say, special with that. For the decimation, I'm using decimation master and I don't really take care of the number of polygons. I already spoke about that in previous uh, videos for this stream then I invite you looking uh, at the past uh, videos. The only thing is this model has been hollowed, uh, hollowed, sorry. Then you see you have an internal thickness for everything and I add some plugs, some keys just to uh, uh, connect each part. And you will notice that inside you have some holes here and here for the keys and the same at the bottom. It may be easier that way. Then the first reason why you you put some I mean, you put some holes is if you hollow the model, the goal is to uh, reduce the print time because you have less volume to print. But another reason is to reduce the amount of resin that you will use because your model is inside a resin tank, and each part which is not uh, cured by the laser, then is ready to be reused for future prints. Then this is a way to save some resin and then saving money. Um, by hollowing, you are saving in terms of printing time, uh, then resin tank because less print and of course less 
resin being printed. And it's very important to consider all these kind of things. And then you need to do some holes because if you are just hollowing inside without any, any kind of escape, uh, escape holes, then the resin will stay inside and it's useless to do the, the hollowing, except of course the printing time. Um, and I'm doing, of course you can do just, okay, why doing all these holes? You can just do one, one to uh, uh, making the resin going outside. No, there is multiple reason. And sorry, this is a little bit technical and tricky and explain that in, in the past in previous stream, but I want really to, to be sure that it's clear for all of you who want to try the 3D printing process and especially the DLP or SLD printing process. It's different for other printing process, but if you're really looking for a printer like the Form 2 or you have the Wanahu Duplicator 7, which is very cheap, which is DLP printer, not as good as the Form 2, but for the price, come on, um, you have the same constraint with that because you have some liquid resin, you have a peeling process, you have a source of light, uh, which will just solidify the resin. This is the same. And then I have multiple holes. One of the reasons is because each time uh, the printer is printing one layer, you have this peeling process, model go, going, going up and down, then you need to, to be sure that the resin will have a good flow uh, during this process. It's able to move all around. This is the first reason. Another reason, of course, if you have multiple holes, you are removing some material. But to be honest, for the size of this model, which is, um, let's say, that size in real life, okay, two or three holes, you will just avoid curing two, min two milliliters of resin, something like that. Sorry, this is just a few cents, not worth the, the stuff to do that. The other reason is when you are doing your process, of printing, uh, I will explain because I will explain some stuff in the software for 3D printing. You will print with some angles like that. And there is one thing that I explained the last time, which is a suction cup, um, which is something very important. Right now you see on my screen, let me switch to the other uh, full screen. I have this model. Sorry, it's a, a little bit uh, dark. Okay. And this model, oops, sorry has been hollowed. And for this kind of model, there is no problem. You have just enough room to have the resin flowing through uh, the model. And this one is just FDM. Let's pick this one, which is SLA. Okay. Uh, the problem is if you're just closing the top that way, say you, there is no opening, just closed. And when you are printing your model, let's say from the bottom, then you have no opening. And you know what happens when you are taking a glass uh, of water, just an empty glass. And you put in some water, just you're put, putting your glass upside down. Then not that way, but that way. And then you push down. What's happening? The water is not going up because you have enough uh, air, uh, air, sorry, uh, just to push down. Then the water can, can go in. You have the same issue. And the other thing, if you are putting some resin or some water in a glass just under the water, you put your glass upside down and then you are making your glass going out of the water. You still have water inside until the uh, glass is uh, on, I mean, above the level, the, the, just the, the water itself. And then you have all the water going down. I don't know if I'm very explicit, but this air pressure or resin pressure can avoid having the flow of resin, then you have a kind of suction cup. This is the same thing. And by doing that, you have a lot of stress applied to the model. This is when the model just trying to just peel from the model, but can't, or you have a lot of strength, a lot of strength. And what happens when you have a lot of strength? Let me just go back on this model. You see, you have the support on the model. And these support are between uh, 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 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.3 millimeters. Then they are very, very small. The contact point is very small. Then if you have a lot of strength applied like that, you can have your support just breaking. And then what happens? You have the base sticking to the build platform and your print just in the resin tank. Then you have a failed print. Another issue, I don't have it here. Yes. This one, you see here, oops, 
this kind of uh, wider area that way it's not very easy to uh, to see it okay that way there is some bubbles some it's not not very clean uh, because you see there is some hole here but nowhere else but when I print I printing that way the model uh, no that way sorry that way and you see uh, no, that way, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to remind in which way it was. Okay. And when I print the model, the printer starting to print, of course, upside down that way. Sorry, this is very difficult to imagine that it's it's always upside down. And it print that, it print that, but you see you have some hole here. But in between from the top point until this level, just trying to see about this area on top. Everything has been hollowed inside. Then you have just a kind of suction cup on this area. And then the resin was trying to flow across the model, but because of pressure each time, it was trying to push. And then it created this kind of bubbles. Then I was aware of this problem when I did the print because uh, I knew it was on the bottom. The surface was not very big, but in fact, it, it put more pressure than I thought on the model because the thickness is not very important. The thickness is 1.5 millimeters which is thick already, but not that thick. Then this kind of thing can, can make your print fail. And if you have just one piece falling in your print, you're doomed for everything else. If you have multiple parts printed, to, um, which are in the, I mean, which are printed together, whatever you have one part which is falling, you, you need to stop the printer because in fact, the printer will stop by itself then it's very very important to consider this kind of thing then i'm doing all these multiple holes it's to be sure that i will have uh, no suction cup on my model or if i have them they are very very small and it won't be a real issue because the volume of hair uh, air being uh, struck inside of my model or resin whatever uh, uh, the one won't be a big problem then it's it's very important and to be honest I see on, on Facebook groups, people for free printing who start to, to print with uh, DLP printers or, or even a printer like the Form 2 and ah, I have a failure, my model fall down, um, it just broke, I have these bubbles, it's because of that. Then you need to really think about all these kind of things. That's why I'm doing, sorry, I just put that back, uh, let me switch back to, oops, sorry, the brush. Uh, I'm trying to do all these holes, then like that, I have enough flow. And my model was printing upside down, then the top was always open. But anyway, I'm always leaving some extra holes to be sure that I have some flow, whatever the problem is. Um, you need to understand as well that the resin is very, uh, not very, but a little bit thick, not that fluid. Um, then the more freedom you give to your resin, the more success your print may be. Okay, uh, let me switch to this one. Okay, this one is uh, the shoulder uh, area, uh, one of the shoulder. What you see here is the extra rows. You remember the small rows which is on top. And this model, which is not that small, I didn't hollow this model. It's just a plain model without uh, uh, any kind of thickness. Why? Because when you are doing your, your uh, let me switch back to the boost. When you are doing this process, and let me just add uh, uh, inserts, I will insert a cube and I will do this slicing process that I'm using with uh, the, um, no, I don't want to be in solo mode anymore. Okay, and in negative, live boolean. Okay, then, Sorry, I'm showing everything, but you see, you have the whole process with the thickness inside, and then you see what is happening based on the other models. And I will explain how to plug two models together because I didn't do that in the last stream. And you have everything that way. But when you are printing, you need what we call support. I explained that in the last stream, this all, uh, uh, pillars, uh, 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 
which are connecting uh, the model to the build platform to help the model growing or to give some strength. So problem is when you have some wall inside of the model, then you may need to have also support as well. Uh, you have this suction cup issue. Then for big models, you are saving some resin, but sometimes it's not worth uh, the, the time because it takes some time to do these kind of things and doesn't worth the small milliliters of resin that you will save by doing this process. And it can bring more issue. Then for big parts it's worth doing. For small parts is it really interesting? Uh, for the model I printed then I show you before then I will clean just after. Um, I just uh, hollowed two models but for the face and everything else it was not interesting and it was something like 100 and 25 milliliters of resin for everything. If I wanted to hollow everything, perhaps I would have 100 just milliliters. Then for 25 milliliters, not worth the time and the risk of having failure to do that. Okay. Um, let me switch back to my solo mode and then. That's why for this kind of things, Okay, it's not that big. It's in fact it's a kind of big thickness already. Okay, for the the the, the arm and for arm same thing. And to be honest, for the print, let me just switch back. Let me pick something. And uh, okay, let me switch to the webcam. It will be better. Okay. You see, for this model, I explained that when I showed this model uh, the last time. And this model, I didn't hollow, I mean, I hollowed nothing for this model. And you see, compared to my hand, it's not that small. But again, it was very risky to uh, clean that because a lot of small details, you need to attach everything, then it's not that, uh, not that interesting. Then. For the sake of saving money, and I understand that because, come on, at $170 the liter of resin, at $79 if I remember the resin tank, uh, it costs some money, then you want to save some money. But if you try to save some money by hollowing and then having fed prints, you will lose more than what you're trying to save, then it's not worth it. Okay, sorry, I was just bring that back. Do you hear me okay when I'm showing the webcam like that? Just let me know in the chat and please let me know if you hear the printer on the background. Because I'm used to that, but perhaps you are not used to that. <laughs> okay, uh, for the printer, this is a Wanahu uh, Duplicator 7. There is other printer, but this one starts to become very popular. Uh, one uh, who duplicator seven. This is something like that. Um, then just look at that. I know multiple people around me purchase the printers. They are, let's say, average. In the average, are happy with the printer. The problem is the software is, uh, like I said, an open source software, which is great, but you need to tweak a lot. You need to test with the resin and people had some issues and while other people are very happy with the printer. Then I didn't try it, uh, then I can't really say about it, just the feedback I saw about this printer. But at $399, the printer, you had $100 for the shipping cost and sometimes there is some resellers. I know in front there is a reseller which is selling that at 449 euros. Then of course this is a VAT, I mean taxes to pay. Um, it's it's very interesting, and I hope after the summer that we will uh, we'll be able to test this printer to give some um, something back. Um, okay, now let's continue quickly about all these parts. Then for the arm, nothing special about that. Um, just one thing is, let me switch back to the full mods. Uh, as you noticed, I have the shoulder and I have the arm, and from arm that way has two parts. I could have done that with just one single part. And in fact, for the other arm, this one, that way, you see if I'm displaying the wireframe, this is just a single part. Then 
why I did one part, one part here and another part here. The other reason, I mean the reason, in fact there is multiple reasons, but the main one is, you see I have some angles here uh, on um, on the shoulder, uh, not the shoulder, sorry, the, um, uh, the elbow, correct? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, I have some angle here and I have all these kind of parts and in fact the more parts you are creating, the more freedom you will have for applying the support on the model. Because if I'm doing everything that way, there is a big risk that I need a lot of support for these areas, in between, etc. And then more support need means more cleaning process. And you will see that just after. Uh, then that's why the more the speed. And to be honest, for the bust, in fact, at the beginning, I did the breast separately. Also for another reason, because if I want to paint and I won't have the time to paint, unfortunately, I would love to, but I know it would be too short in terms of time. But having multiple parts means you, you have more freedom to put some uh, uh, masking tape, uh, to paint just some part like, like that. You see my rose. If I want to paint it in white, like the original illustration, I just have this part. I can paint that with the airbrush in white and then plug that to the model. It's very easy. No masking needed for the painting process. Then for that one, in fact, it shouldn't be very, very complex, but it will be extra work. Okay. Uh, I was on the arms. Uh, and of course, for the arms, I also did them separately, which are just uh, uh, connected with a, a plug. Let me switch back to not transparency but solo mode. You see, just a single plug, and you see for the 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 road, the, the big stick for the uh, the broom, uh, which is going through uh, inside as just a, a negative item. Uh, there is nothing complex for that, but I will explain for the broom some stuff after. Um, for the skirt, this is the only model which hasn't been notified, uh, modified except just one part uh, for the model. You will see that all of the other parts have some area where you see negative parts which have been removed just to connect everything. Not that one. In fact, the only thing I did is this small, just uh, um, uh, negative uh, uh, cube, in fact, I put uh, inside just to give a small gap. And this small gap is just to give a little bit of movement and deformation because I'm pretty sure perhaps it will be useless. But when I will try just to plug everything together, that it may force a little bit on the top. This is where the model is done. And by doing that, I will have a little bit of freedom just to force without breaking parts. Then I will see if it's working or not. It will be a surprise. This is the first time I'm doing that. And I'm doing the same thing for the apron, but the apron, I did that just from top to bottom because I will have other part on top. You have this big knot uh, on the back of the model, which will be on top here. Then by doing that, the resin is enough flexible just to move slightly, just to plug everything. Then uh, this one should be more useful than the other one. And you see from outside, these area are just where I'm putting the knot, like I said before. And you see inside, this part and i think we can see them as well on the background all around are just the parts from uh, um, the, uh, the skirt which is unmoved which has been removed to uh, from this part then i just subscribe subtract the skirt and i will show you that you see right now the final result but i will show you that uh, the, the wall model you see i have a tool with 93 sub tool loaded <laughs> and at what stage it was 128 sub tools if i remember correctly and a lot of sub tool for just a simple figuring um okay and you see for all this part of model there is no need to hollow because the thickness by itself is uh, way enough and there is nothing to hollow at this stage then you have the small knots and you see the small knot. I don't know if you say knot, 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 knot. <laughs> Sorry for my French accent, as usual. Uh, I have all of these parts. Let me just switch to remove the solo mode. You see 
this part is one part and two other parts and I separate everything this one and this one and this one by uh, I did that just because it would be easier to print and after just easier to just to plug it's just some small holes some glue and it's done hi Gary uh, yeah for the printer you, you know uh, the great jug uh, for the printer it's mm, uh, I can't guarantee anything the only printer I can just uh, uh, advise uh, give some let's say some uh, recommendations uh, are the printer I know I know the Ultimaker uh, 2 which is sorry on the floor right now uh, the Form 2, the Form 1 Plus, uh, the MakerBot uh, 2 uh, the Zim but other printer this is I mean I have not enough background to really give serious recommendations because to be honest uh, please this is my point of view uh, then um, you need to do your point of view but try to choose a printer which has uh, which is from a company which is not unknown or which already have multiple models which is which is not the first printer they are doing some company which seems to be serious with with a support uh, with a website which looks professional which is doing some marketing which have an active Facebook page um, which uh, uh, has very important a very strong community and if possible which have a kind of a wall ecosystem. What I'm describing, in fact, is what is Form Labs. But there is not only Form Labs. There is other companies, like for the Ultimaker, which is a huge, huge community. You have also this open source printer, like um, oh, I forgot the name, uh, which are very cheap. Um, ah, I forgot the name. But you have multiple open source, but. If there isn't a big company behind, but a lot of people, a lot of parts that you can buy upgrade, fine. But if you see on Kickstarter a new revolution, a revolutionary printer at a very cheap price uh, with some people who have no, let's say, background and stuff like that, wait for the printer to be really available and not something which will be available in a couple of years or one and a half. Because in between, you may have multiple extra printer which will be in the market and now i mean i've purchased the form uh, not the form one plus i just purchased it just after the release but uh i purchased uh, uh purchased um, one printer on kickstarter and other stuff on kickstarter and the one i purchased on kickstarter the uh, the zim which was one of the first dual uh, extruder uh, which was fast, uh, built in aluminium and a uh, very interesting printer with some cartridge, uh, with a kind of open mode. Yeah, great on the paper. We received the printer not too late, but just the company died. And they, had, they, they used a slicer which was online in the cloud. And that's why I'm not a big fan of the cloud, because the day that the cloud is just breaking, I mean, not available anymore, you're doomed. And for the printer, uh, it was just a dead printer. Fortunately, we had some people who find a way to just replace uh, the motherboard with uh, a, a Raspberry Pi and using a Linux distribution and then having a way to uh, Frankensteinize uh, the printer to make it working. But even that, I have some issues. I have no support. Then this printer, my fr I mean, one of the co-workers who purchased with me the Form 2 and a friend as well, we've been three to purchase this printer. I mean, we spent $900 plus shipping for nothing then take care with that sorry for this long talk um, uh, oh just one thing uh, Gary you are saying that the 3d printer guy or something like that on a YouTube channel um, to be honest and again this is my own opinion and I have nothing against this kind of printer but I saw multiple test of printer on YouTube because I'm looking at that of course I have an interest in 3d printing and you have people who are testing the printer but what they're doing they're just doing downloading some files on Thingiverse they are just receive a printer from a company just doing the test models and they are not I'm sorry to say that but they are not really using a printer I mean you can test a printer in just five or ten days this is a matter of a month or a couple of months testing multiple stuff and multiple uh, possibilities multiple materials and multiple types i saw some reviews i was 
kind of shock about ah oh, great printer very nice we can have this but if you want to print something else like a figurine or some let's say uh, 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 parts which are very specific um, the software behind may, may be not good or a lot of things I mean be very careful like be very careful with what I'm saying as well <laughs> I'm not good <laughs> uh, sorry uh, I'm talking a lot and I'm not doing a lot with the brush uh, uh, <laughs> right now um, let me know if you want me to avoid this kind of talk about the 3d printer because i'm very passionate with that and i don't want to uh, uh, to go too much in um, in this kind of long talks okay uh, now with the best this one okay sorry i was uh, not hearing the printer anymore this is very funny because the form two times two times is stopping the print just to sense the resin just to, to see the white of the resin and based on that it will just refill the uh, the resin tank with more resin and it do it, each, each time it, it does a pose and i'm kind of asking questions something goes wrong <laughs> uh, can you share gary uh, the link of the youtube channel in the chat please just to look at it if you don't mind uh, just to avoid me searching that on, on YouTube. Then for this one, just two comments that you will see. And this is the part I printed. This is this, uh, this part, you see, that way. Okay. Uh, then this part was, I mean, I asked myself a lot of questions what I wanted to do that is, do I do the panties as a single mesh? Do I separate them because of what this kind of small, uh, 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 small extrusion, let's say, because of the panties? And I wasn't very sure. Then it would be a surprise. I'm afraid to have some bad surprise at the last minute. I will see. Then I decided anyway to remove the panties because I want to paint. If I want to paint the panties, it would be easier. To paint as a separate model than trying to deal with the legs and and, um, and bust and all these kind of things then i split that and what you see on top is just the skirt which has been removed as a negative mesh that way to be sure that it will just fit inside and when i did that and i will show you that after i've been very careful to be sure that it will just to have some angles to be sure that it will just fall down perfectly and that's why i did this small cut behind the skirt to give some, some, a little bit of freedom just when i will try to uh, to fill the model okay uh, and of course i have a bunch of holes the same reason as before and this one because it's bigger it's worth doing some holes and hollowing the model to save some resin okay uh, just an extra details and you see if i'm close if I'm zooming in, we see a lot of polygons of the model and of course it has been decimated and we see all these small uh, triangles and you will say, oh Thomas, it may lack of resolution. Don't forget that this model will be at mm, roughly this size and at this size you won't see the small polygons. The only thing perhaps I should have done is giving more details for the um, belly button. Yeah, sorry for my vocabulary. This is the only thing, but don't need to, to do more polygons. Okay, uh, thank you for the channel. Let me look at that. Perhaps this is not one of the channels I know. There is so many channels now for uh, the 3D printing, but it's it's good anyway. Uh, I mean, it's good to look at these. Oh, I'm Joel. I am YouTube. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's good to look at this channel because anyway you can see the uh, printer working in real time uh, you can see the comments of people and it's a good source of information then it's it's very important but uh, you need to see about uh, let me check the videos sorry my interface is in French um, there's a cut because most of this channel to be honest are oriented to FDM printers, not SLA of or D, uh, DLP printers. And as a ZBrush user, there is more interest in DLP and I mean resin based printers. Um, then, yeah, it's uh, you, you need to look at them anyway. Uh, anyway, the more information, you know, better it will be. Okay. 
Uh, in French is interface. Interface. Uh, no, this is. Uh, oh yes, this is my channel. Yeah, you see a lot of things. <laughs> you can see who I'm following. <laughs> there is no secrets. I love, I like to make stuff as a channel, uh, very interesting, I have a lot of music stuff, real engine, technology, and of course ZBrush stuff, learning Japanese because I learn Japanese, etc, uh, etc. Et anyway, uh, ooh, some interface stuff, uh, except that there is nothing special, oh yes, yeah, some part of the legs, you see a lot of holes everywhere, like cheese, uh, same as before, the same ones, I mean the same. Uh, same thing. I'm just a little bit. Uh, um, I'm. I have some concern about when I will try to plug everything because there is some kind of angles, and I. I think that I may need to send a little bit more to be sure that everything will fit together. Sorry. Um, let me just finish quickly. It will be fast. Uh, this is some part. Let me just show you that. Uh, that way. Okay, what you see right now is a live boolean uh, of the model. Uh, I don't know why some parts. Uh -huh. Okay, sorry, it was not on the good one. Then what I did for multiple parts, of course, except splitting the model, is you see I have. Uh, Right now, okay. you see I have three parts. The top one, let me solo mode everything, is the uh, uh, outside part of the model, uh, which is, uh, that's something I split with the brush. Sorry, it has been, oh no, this one hasn't been decimated, but I used the Boolean operation before just to split uh, the part from uh, the panties on this area, this is the panties uh, areas, and I did some connector, some plug, uh, some keys uh, uh, in between. And then what I did was to do a copy of this model, and I just did the Dynamesh. And this Dynamesh, like you see right now, Dynamesh at a low resolution, uh, I put that as a negative model for my Boolean, and I did an inflate. And in deformation, I did, I presented that the last time, but I did an inflate just to shrink the model. And for the inflate, I did the same thing almost everywhere. I did an inflate of minus 15. Minus 15, which was, uh, which gave me a thickness of approximately 1.8 millimeters, which is far enough for the thickness of the whole model. Um, and you see when you are doing this inflate, you have this kind of uh, 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 overlaps of polygons. Then don't dynamesh at this stage or we'll have some kind of closed holes and topology issues. But it's pretty quick to do some, eventually some polish, you see, that way, to clean your model, which is quite, quite fast, or simply using your move brush all around. And because this is an internal thickness, you don't need to be accurate it's not a big deal if somewhere you have 1.8 or 1.9 or 1.7, even some area with just one millimeters of thickness. It's not a big deal, but you need to have a clean topology. And you see, sometimes you need to do it twice because you have some very thin areas that way. You update Dynamesh. And now if you go back in your sub tools, let me remove the solo mode. You see the thickness of the model, which is in fact bigger because I did a thickness on top of a thickness already. And this is just the technique behind. The problem is, you see these small holes which has been created. If you don't do the holes, I have a thickness inside, but no way to have the resin being able to escape. Uh, 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 no, Gary, it's not really a roundup uh, uh, stream. Of course, I'm explaining a lot of things because I did that offline and I want to explain what I did and the way I did it. Uh, to be honest, um, like I said, I, I lost, I, I lose, uh, lost, sorry, quite some time this week. I, I spent, I mean, I lost three days. Uh, I had to travel to the, to the other side of France, unfortunately. I work at night, but 
doing this preparation process is very, very, very long. It's technical and very long because you need to check everything and be sure it will be fine because I want to be accurate and I want to secure my prints. And I want really to make you understanding that 3D printing is great. 3D printing is fun when you are able to create what you can print. But if you want to have quality results, you need to really prepare your work and understand all these restrictions for 3D printing. Unfortunately, 3D printing is very far to like 2D printers just to print, press a button to print in color or in black and white and it's done. Mm, not really. And that's why I'm trying to recap. And you have, let me switch to solo mode, this uh, wall set of cylinders. Let me switch back now to the boolean mode which are just hollowing the model. So it's not hollowing through the model because I increase the thickness. Now these uh, tubes are not uh, uh, long enough uh, to do the operation, but this is the ID behind. And for this stuff, I just use uh, the uh, IMM um, primitive uh, brush and insert some cylinders uh, that I created a new sub tool and I duplicated them. Nothing complex at this stage. Okay, um, and now, I mean, for the legs, nothing special for that. The only thing I did for the legs, I did uh, uh, just a single part for everything, including the shoes. I could have done the shoes separately, but because of the lack of time, I prefer doing just a single model. And for these legs, uh, as you see, this is just, uh, uh, um, um, I didn't hollow this model. And I think it would be worth the money to hollow this model. But why I did not? Because you see, I have a, a small hole here. Because on this area, this is where I will plug this uh, this uh, glass rod, this glass stick that I shown you before. And I want to be sure that this leg will be able to support the weight of the wall model. It's a big one. Then I want to be sure to have enough strength. Then if I hollow the model, it may I mean, have less mass. And well, I want it to to secure this kind of thing. Uh, and finally, for the other one, this one, let me just hide the top part. Uh, in fact, I look in the software and to hollow the model was not worth the money in terms of removing the resin. Then I decided, but okay, leave it that way. Um, okay, uh, the broom is kind of just basic. I just did a hole uh, 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 here for the uh, broomstick. You see that way. And I split it in two parts. Let me remove the solo mode and unhide everything. And you see I did a split just inside on this area. Why? Because this broomstick, I don't know the name in English, sorry, this long rod, I don't know the name, uh, is too long for the printer to print. Or it may be tricky to print this very long and thin stuff because of the peeling, it will be long for nothing. Then it's better to slice it, cut it in two parts and then connecting them just in between. And for that, I use a special uh, uh, a splitter, let's say. I will show that just after the, the, this part. Uh, and at the end, the base for the robots. I, in fact, originally it was bigger and I had to scale it down because it need to fit the printer volume. Then I thought, okay, what I will do? Do I, sorry. Do I scale down this base, which will support the white of the character, which may be not that, I mean, which may be a little bit uh, heavy uh, or do I keep the large size and then trying to split in in two parts or four parts my model just in between just below the robots because the robots I can hide them okay you see this is two parts because like that I can paint the robots separately and having the base paint separately then I can put everything and then I can cut here going through and going through here but each time you do some cuts like that in between it's very important after to use some putty just to clean to sand because it will it will be visible and also i want to be sure that this base will have enough uh, uh, um, strength to support the white of everything then if you start to break in multiple parts uh, it may become fragile then 
and it's very important to be careful with that. Then I decided to keep at the maximum size possible for the 3D printer. And for the robot, uh, let me show you that. I just did some hollowing inside. Why? Of course, for the resin volume, because this is not that small. And another reason is, let me put back the base. You see this base, let me use transpose. And this base is right now um, 17 centimeters. Okay because I'm printing in millimeters, then I need to multiply by 100 to have the good size. Right now, I'm in a centimeters unit inside of the brush, but divide by 10, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but I'm trying everything with units, and each time I'm exporting, I multiply by 100 uh, in a 3D Print Hub, the plugin, the size. And for that, this is then, like I said, 17.5 centimeters. And unfortunately, my printer build volume is not that big. This is 14.5 uh, 14 by 14.5 by 17.7 for the print. Then just for the height, I just have enough space to print it, but not for the width. Then you will see later what I did to do that, to print the model without cutting the model. This is very stupid, but it's working fine. Okay. And again, let me just display the road and uh, which leg it was it was the other leg uh, i think this is that one okay and the road where are you okay then what you see right now is just a part of the model just the bottom part and you see that oh, let me just display everything okay I think I explained that during the last uh, presentation. Sorry, I don't remember exactly, but right now you have the full scene on the side view without the perspective. And you have the small base, which will support everything. Let me switch to the other side, that way. Okay. My problem is, if you are looking about this line, let me switch back to transpose. Okay, this line. You are just on the top, me and just at the edge of the base and if you are looking at my model you have a lot of this is just the, the the limits of my model and everything which is on the left side of the screen and on the front of the character all the white have nothing to support just a little bit on the back and i don't think that i will have enough resin and white to make the model just not falling from the front, just on on the i mean uh, falling to the front side uh, of the figurine and this is something very common with a lot of people who print for the first time is, ah, I have a gravity problem. And right now I have a gravity problem. Then how can I solve that? If I did uh, these small holes everywhere is because inside of this robot, I will put some metallic parts, some white, just to have a base which will be very heavy and just being sure that this base will support the white of the print on the top. And that's why I hollow everything and I will put enough white. Of course, another solution is to have another base which can go just on the front part on this area. Then I will try the white and if it doesn't work, work enough, then I will find a way to have a base going on the front part. And why I'm talking to that? Let me just grab a print. Hold on. Because I speak of uh, by experience or this kind of things. I, sorry, I will look at the chat just after. I, I, I see that you have a lot of comments. Um, okay. You see this print? Oops, sorry. What you see is Dougly. This is the name of this small dog, which is a French bull bulldog. Uh, I did that years ago on a trade show with the illustrator who did, in fact, this is a French comic. And the guy wanted, oh, I have a friend and he wanted to do with Maya and it has been tricky. And uh, for that, in fact, the brush is yeah, very easy. And we print this model. And as you can notice, there is, uh, sorry, just move that way. No, I have some contrast. Oh, let me just write something. 
Is it better or not? Yeah, it's better that way. Okay, you see I have a base on the model because the legs are very small and it has been printed with what was a Z-Corp printer at that time in color. And of course, we've been very afraid about uh, having the legs breaking. And then that's why we did this base. But the problem is, you see the size of the head? This is a big head. And inside, this is just pure powder. Uh, then it was just falling that way. In fact, the gravity point is very, very close to the edge here. Then when you are put, pose, I mean, uh, just uh, making your model just standing on the floor, it's fine, but there is nothing that could make it just falling. And we noticed that, in fact, because you see this one, this is some bronze. This is the same one printing in bronze by a jeweler uh, in the south of France. And this jeweler, very great job. I mean, it's very nice. Uh, it has been printed with a solid scale printer. Uh, and we decided, of course, to increase the size of the base. You see the base is going just at the limit of uh, the top part, the nose of uh, the dog. Uh, then that's why it's very, very important to uh, consider the gravity. You are working in the real world. You are not anymore in the virtual world. Then um, it's, again, this is a tricky part and you need to think about that because there is nothing uh, more horrible than doing your old design at the end when it's printed, notice that uh, it's falling. Okay, sorry for the long talk. Uh, now I will just uh, go back in uh, everything that way. And I won't do a lot of comments because I know I'm talking a lot and I will switch to uh, the, 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 um, the manual part, let's say the post-processing uh, 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 part of uh, the presentation. Um, just want to explain some stuff. Okay. Uh, oh, did you know that that in ZBrush now, if you want to hide and unhide everything, I think I told you that in the past, but you need to press the shift key now to hide and unhide everything. While before it was just a single click, it then, now this is a user choice to do it and not a user error to, <laughs> to do it. Uh, okay. Oops. Uh, okay. Then, the part you see here is just dedicated to the head uh, itself. And for the head, you see, I have a front part and a back part. And I think I did, no, not in that one, sorry. And for that one, you see, I did just a big connector and you have the back of the head which has been removed. And in fact, if you are looking at my 3D printed model, this one, you see that you have the head without the hairs on top. The hairs are separately, you see? And I was not very sure, but I told, I told to myself that if I'm doing that, if this is more work, but I will have more freedom to paint the hairs, of course, and the face as well, than not the hairs on top. And then, of course, it means less support. Then this is a lot of things that you need to, again, to consider. And let me just switch back. And that's why you have the hairs, uh, which are separate at this stage. You have the headbands, everything. Then you see that everything has been made, oops, sorry, uh, separately. And uh, let, me, let me just do an example with something else. Let me explain you the process of how to split the parts. Uh, let me start from scratch. Uh, not the shoulder. Um, yeah. Let's do the bust and uh, the hips. Then I will clone that and the hips as well. Clone. Okay. Bust. Append. Hips. Okay. Now we have these models. And what I will want to do is to, uh, to be sure that uh, I will have these two parts uh, just split it together the way they should be. And as you will see, it's not that complex. Uh, mm, 
Will I do the breast or not? Sorry, I'm just thinking at the same time. Okay, then if you're looking at this model, what you can do right now, just always to check that everything is working fine is, like I did before, append just this cube 3D, put that as a negative shape, move in gizmo mode, and see how things are going on. And you see, if I'm switching from the hips to the bust, except the boundaries of the top of this kind of bust part, top part, then there is no holes. Then you need to be sure that everything is connected together that way. If you start to have some holes, then when you will start to plug, it won't work. Then it's more important to be sure that the bust will just be in, uh, inter will intersect as much as possible uh, on your model. Then, now I know that my model is working fine. What you can do is, let me just hide this cube. And what I will do is, I will just create the boost part with the connector together. I mean, just to be sure that I will connect everything. And what is very important is to create a small gap uh, in between. Uh, why this gap? And this gap is something like, I don't know, uh, 0 0.5 millimeters. It's very small, but enough to give some tolerance when you will connect everything because we need to send or the printer sometimes is just shrinking a little bit the models. Um, you may have some painting and all this kind of thing. Then it's great to have a small gap and not being 100% accurate when you uh, 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 slice the model. Oh, sorry, I forgot to look at the chat. Um, sorry, sorry, I'm talking a lot. I'm <laughs> inside of my stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the great job. If you really want to do this kind of figuring, I mean, a lot of models that you want to print with ZBrush, which are not, let's say, cosplay, I mean, big shape with small design. I think I should have this model where it is, because I have kids play with it earlier today. Uh, I don't know if I showed that in the past. I don't remember, sorry, I I'm losing my mind. But you see, this kind of stuff. Okay, uh, I can remove my glasses and blah. Uh, for this kind of stuff, of course, there is no way to print that with uh, the Form 2. I mean, it's way too big and it would be so much expensive. Uh, for this kind of things, an FDM printer is great. And if you want to print at a large size, large scales, then you, you almost must go with FDM printer or you need to do a lot of parts with the, uh, the, the uh, uh, FDM or SLA printer. It may be very complex. I mean, I will do it for my Star Wars destroyer, but uh, take care of that. Um, then that's why it's very important to go through uh, 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 more an SLA printer if you are printing, let's say, stuff which are 10 centimeters, uh, let's say uh, five inches, it's a bit more, but uh, or can be bigger. Uh, if you want, let's say, this kind of uh, uh, écorché, which is, I don't know, uh, 30 centimeters, something like that, uh, a little bit less, 25. Okay, this is great to print that with an FDM, uh, an FDM, uh, an SLA or DLP printer. But FDM for that, mm, it's maybe not that good. Then yes, takes your time, choose your printer carefully, look for feedback, but it's better to take your time than doing the wrong choice. Um, uh, um, would it would be good to set my real name for Twitch? Oh. It's up to you. <laughs> um, yeah, Gary, it's I wasn't able, in fact, to do everything in stream because the last week I continue after the stream, this Pixelogic stream on my own channel. But uh, uh, the last stuff I did was during the day, at night. I mean, really random, and I want I had 
the need to really speed my process. And when I'm doing a live stream, I'm way slower, uh, slower than I'm doing just when I'm alone. And during the three day I was traveling, I used my Cintiq, my mobile, mobile studio pro uh, to do my stuff, but it was uh, at my mother house with a low bandwidth and uh, no way <laughs> to do that. Um, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, center of gravity is very important. Um, yeah, uh, for the base, Gary just asking, uh, it's giving, uh, uh, giving a comment that so the center of gravity is important, but then why did you hollow the base and didn't let it be solid more weight, more stability? In fact, the resin is kind of heavy, but not that much. And I think it's important for me to uh, uh, hollow and just giving a thickness for the base and saving some money. And with this money, and I can buy a lot of white to put inside of this base. And I prefer going through the base, through the white to add than just giving more resin. And I know the extra resin would have, would have changed almost nothing for the gravity issue. Um, and yes, it can, it can be just some magnets and sticking to some metallic base. You have multiple solutions, of course. Um, Yeah, it's, it's to be honest, I have now quite some experience in this resin printing and I'm still learning on a regular basis. Uh, I mean, I started, I mean, I purchased the Form 1 uh, on the release. It was something now four years ago and I had a strong interest in 3D printing. I mean, it's now more than 10 years that I, I, I have a strong interest. I've been, uh, sorry, it has been 10 years now that uh, I have a, a strong interest in 3D printing. Then uh, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, and if I could buy more printers, I would do it. <laughs> um, and yes, I have my own channel. I'm right now streaming on Pixelogic, but I have my own Polyscult uh, uh, channel. Uh, and I'm streaming when I have the time, <laughs> uh, etc. Um, and yes, I could change the size of the road uh, for the glass road for the, the gravity. Not that much. And the problem is I don't know how to cut some road. <laughs> in glass i have no idea then it's i just purchased the only thing i found which was at, at a regular size this is some laboratory uh, laboratory uh, glass world for experiences and uh, mixing liquids and stuff like that um, okay sorry let's finish with the talk because i want to move forward with the, the cleaning process uh, then for that what i'm doing and I have this burst with hips. Uh, then, and I will do the hollowing just to show you the whole process. Sorry, there is no breast, but we don't care. Uh, then, for that one, what I will do first is I will uh, um, slice this part. Let me just check with the transparency because perhaps you know, I think I slice it just at the limit. <laughs> perhaps there is no need. But the only thing I'm always doing when I want to remove from the top part, the bust part, I'm duplicating this one. And this is, will be a new start group and another start group. Start group, you remember, this is what will create a new sub tool. Then it will do the Boolean operation between the beginning of the start group until it finds another start group. Then by doing that, I will just work on this area. I can even hide that one. And then each time, I say, okay, this bust, I want to remove it from my model, you see, and you see the small slice that way. Let me just, sorry, I, I will trick a little bit uh, the process. Let me just, okay. Imagine that it will be like that. Sorry, I just tricked a little bit the, the process, okay? And this is what you will see if you want just to remove this, Bottom part, I can do the move. My one is not working anymore. Come on. So I'm trying to do the same move on both of them. Okay, let's say it's the same. Okay, let's say they are on the same position, both of them. Okay, then what I'm doing right now, I'm working on this area because I want to later having another part, which is the bottom part, which is the bust, uh, not the bust, the hips, uh, to be connected with that. The problem is if I'm printing the model that way, 
and then the hips that way, it will just plug on the theory. But like I told you, sometimes there is some shrinkage or the model shrink a little bit or because of printing process, you may have some tolerance you need to consider. Then this is very important that when you are removing a part of a model, like I did here, just to give an extra gap. And for this small gap, what I'm doing, like I said before, I'm taking this negative model and I will go in my deformation palette and I will do my inflate and just tapping one. It just increases a little bit and this extra gap, which is not that big, will give me more freedom to attach the model together. And it's not that big and because this is below the boundary of the model, even if I have a small gap visible at the end, it will be just below my model, then add the direct, direct look to the model, you won't see it. Except if you are looking down and looking in, be accurate. And also because the model will be at that size, then it will be even smaller. But this small gap is very important. That's why when you are preparing, this is not only just slicing the model, this is also considering these kind of gaps. And you will do the same that by the connector. Then if I want to add a connector, which will say negative, a kind of key, and positive on this one, just to be sure that when I will plug them together, that I will have this kind of key in between to connect them and avoid some moving or finding the good orientation. It will be the same for the positive key and the negative one. I will need to put this extra gap of, let's say, one for inflate to give a little bit of freedom. I know that the key will fit perfectly. It perhaps it will move a little bit, but it will be well oriented and enough to glue everything, making everything in place. Then for this connector, this is uh, very easy to do a connector. You are just making this polysphere 3D. I will, uh, I showed that the last time, but let me redo that. I'm taking a quick cube that way. Uh, you can pick your uh, gizmo, you take the taper deformation that way to give some angle and I want to have that straight. Now it's done uh, and what I will do, geometry, I remove my smoothing for the subdivision. I'm dividing that twice, smoothing again and now I have some just rounding angle. Of course you can keep that straight with a, a sharp angle but Anyway, this part won't be visible. Then having some soft angle, we give more freedom when you will just uh, uh, connect everything together. Then my sub two, let me copy it. I'll go back to this bust part. Okay, I will paste it. Okay, this is here. I don't know where it is. Okay, that's a good location. Let me rotate like that. I'm always trying to align with the normal of the model. And you see right now, I don't really see what. You see what right now, what you see, this is the bottom part of the model. Why? Because I have the top part, this one. And after I have this uh, a key, which is added. And then it's removing the bottom part, the hips of the character. Don't forget that this Boolean process is linear from the top to the bottom. Then now if I'm moving that just at the end of this start group down you have the top part these hips are removed from this top part and after the key is added and say oh nothing changed you just need to move you need to refresh uh, the display of the brush now i can scale that let me remove my symmetry and i'm able to put this shape like that and i'm trying again to align as much as possible with the normal the average normal because when you will plug, you won't plug that way, but really vertically, just be aligned with the model, then don't forget about that. And it makes me think that I need, you see this kind of stuff here? You will see after, we need to clean that. Then this key has been done. This is a positive one. I need to do a negative one on this hip part. Then I will duplicate this model. Okay, now it, I move that down in the other start group. Let me hide that one display that one you see this is here and this one I say okay I want it to be negative and you have now the negative key just to connect in between don't forget that you need to have a small gap in between then this negative one I will use my deformation inflate 
where are you inflate and I just type one and you see the change for the gap now this is way enough to do this connection in between then if I'm doing I mean I'm generating the mesh right now I will have uh, the connector with the keys I mean being plugged with a small gap in between and the top part of my sub tool, this one, will have the bottom part being just removed with a small gap to be sure it will plug perfectly, and this key which just fit with the negative part, just uh, perfectly. Then you see this is the same process you do for everything else. Uh, there is nothing really complex, it's just time consuming and see, okay, which one I need to remove, I need to add, then it's a lot of steps and if you are looking about this hip stuff you will see a lot of hips which is here which is at least two or three parts here uh, here because I need to remove from the top part for the legs not the legs but for the arms uh, for the panties and you, you are duplicating the model very easily very quickly then it's a lot of up and down Anyway, uh, I will just finish with the, uh, what I said, this kind of small uh, 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 issue here and the hollowing very quickly. And after I will switch to uh, the, um, the cleaning process. I need to look at the time. Um, okay, why do I have this issue, this kind of garbage stuff with uh, weird polygons? You remember I did uh, an inflate with this model. Let me just isolate that one with the solo mode. Uh, you see, this is what you see all around your model. Because of the inflate, it just inflates the model, but if your boundaries, your topology is not that clean because you have this variation of topology, because I did a close hole at a previous step, uh, it's not very good. Then be very careful with that. Then trying to just smooth a little bit your model because if you do something like that which is not very clean the problem is uh, you may have some boolean warnings at least because it will try to uh, connect some polygons which shouldn't connect together you see it's not very good to see these kind of things and if i'm close just zooming Perfect. very close you see this vertex is not connecting that's why it's important to relax everything and avoiding this kind of uh, um, uh, intersect intersected polygons sorry and I'm I'm very soft with my smoothing because I don't really want to change the shape of my model of course because this is a negative model you can also convert that to, to a DynaMesh in a high resolution to be sure you have exactly the same size before doing your operation. Uh, yes, high polyfusion. Yeah, polyfusion knows the sound of the printer because he, 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 uh, polyfusion uh, owns a form too as well. Um, Yeah, Gary, I know that I can, I can hit the, the, the road, the, the glass, uh, the, the road made in glass, but I don't want to be sure it will darken that. I don't have the tools and, and anyway, it will be high in the sky, let's say, since it's uh, falling down. And in a way, I prefer then uh, I'll see if I have no way, perhaps I will try to find something else. Um... Yeah, uh, Gary, that's why your garage kit figurine never fits and I have to spend as much time sending filling gaps uh, as I need time painting. Yeah, if you're doing garage kit, yeah, yeah, because I don't know which garage garage kit you are buying, but if you are buying this cheap one from China, um, like from E2046 website, uh, they are just... Uh, um, uh, oh, you say that in English. Uh, they are not official ones, they are just copies uh, of, uh, of figurines. And uh, these are just done, uh, they are just using an existing figurine that doing some mold on top of that and after doing some mass production. That's why they are not very good kits. Then I don't know if, if these ones are, 
are that this type of, of garage kit, but this is another reason that they are not as accurate as the original one. And I know also that because I did some garage kits when I was younger, a lot of people are not taking care of these small gaps. Sometimes they are too big, some, sometimes don't even exist. Sorry, I have some hard time talking again tonight. Um, anyway, I have um, this stuff done, done, sorry. And now when I'm doing the hollowing, I can do that at this stage, or I can do that after doing the brand operation. This is really up to you. Then if I want to hollow my model right now, then just at one stage, this bust, I will duplicate as well. This is just below. And like I said before, I will shrink it uh, to uh, a value of minus 15 because this is the value I need for this thickness. Since my all my models are together, I know this is a constant thickness everywhere. Then the, the, the inflate will be the same. Then I'm going in my deformation palette again and my inflate minus 15. And you see this is now inside. You have the two models on top of each other. Let me just solo that one. And you see the problem with the, um, the, the thickness, the, the inflate, is that you have all these edges which are just uh, overlapping. Then you need to be very careful and clean your model uh, after the process. Another stuff that you can do because I have a lot of polygons. I have 2.5 million of polygons. This is hollowing, this is inside. I don't need to have uh, to be accurate. I just want to remove some material. And by doing that, what you can do is, let me just delete my subdivision levels. And for that one, Dynamesh will be fine. Let me switch to 600, something like that, without the projection, Dynamesh. And you see I have now 68,000 uh, 68, of polygons, which is way enough to do my thickness. And then I can go back in my deformation palette. I will have the same results but I, have, I will have less polygon to smooth and to clean. Uh, inflate, minus 15. Okay, you see same result. But now if you want to smooth everything, it's way faster than if you want to polish. You see, that way, now you can clean. It's way faster. And because this is a Dynamesh, you can Dynamesh after everything. And you see it shrink even more my model, but I don't care if I'm losing, I mean, I'm losing, I'm increasing the thickness. I prefer to have more thickness than not enough. And I know I will do this process multiple times, just enough to clean my topology. And I will do a couple of times of extra Dynamesh update because I know I will have some flat areas we need to clean. Just go all around. This part are the most sensitive ones. Okay, let me finish. And you see, this is easier and faster to do that with 68,000 of polygons than trying to do it with, like it was before, it was two or three millions of polygons. I've done Dynamesh, and you see I have this cheese effect. And that's why I can continue to clean and having more rounded uh, edges all around my model. Okay, that way I update. And it takes a little bit of time. It's not a one click button process, but it's not that long. As soon as, of course, you understand this kind of restrictions. Okay, now my negative shape is done. And if I go back in my solo mode, sub tool, I have that one. You see nothing. Why? Because your model is inside. If I bring back this cube, that way has a negative shape. Uh, why? Uh, oh, sorry, it's positive. <laughs> now I see my thickness. You see, like that, you can evaluate the thickness of your model and you see oops this one should be removed for my model then I need to move that up uh, not that one sorry just mm -hmm. this one should be removed no sorry for the hips and then at the end 
doing the thickness. Sorry, you see the order is very important. I'm removing the mesh, I'm adding the key after, and then I'm doing the hollowing of the model. And you see what is, uh, oops, sorry, this one. Let's grab the good sub tool. You see, and now you see the hollowing. And you see, oh, that's not good. I have a kind of hole on this area. Then I will need to fix my model. There is no way to allow to have some holes like that because this hole is not decided. This is very, very small area with very, very thin polygons. It's not a hole I decided to do. And like that, you can evaluate if your thickness is good. And you see, you see the same problem on this area. Why? Oh, some mosquito. Great. Uh, why? Because, oh, no, that's a B. <laughs> Let me just close the door, sorry. It's pretty hot in my office right now. Um, okay, let me just finish that and I will look at the chat just after. Uh, then to do that, I can simply select my negative shape for the bust. This thickness, picking the move brush and just moving down the polygons that way. And you see, because this is a real time Boolean operation, I see the result, of course, in real time. And I can move up. Like that you can see your result which appear and you see below this kind of problem same thing i can use my move brush oops that one and moving up my thickness and when i'm doing that i'm just editing my thickness i mean the internal part of my model okay now it has been done i can remove this cube then this mesh, I have this key, I hollowed my model. The only thing which remains to be done is to add these small holes. And for that, there is nothing complex at all, really nothing complex. You are picking the IMM, let me press IMM primitive brush. And on top, on top you have multiple primitives. You pick this insert cylinder primitive. And let me do that just on the bottom. Click and drag. You see this cylinder appears here, but inside of my model. I just leave it right like it is right now and you need to remember that when you are using the insert meshes the insert mesh is uh, a regular mesh of course but everything else has been masked uh, except the inserted mesh and by doing that you can go in the uh, um, sub tool split and you have split unmasked points and i'm splitting what is masked and what is not masked and by doing that now i have this cylinder as a separate sub tool. If I'm using this B is very annoying. Uh, up and down. Oh, sorry, that way you see the cylinder going up and down. This is negative one. I can increase the size, and now you see, like that, I can open the holes uh, to allow uh, my resin to go through my model. Come on, save. Um, Come on, come on, come on. Okay. And then you can duplicate. And if you see that, okay, why disappear? Because it's just that the depth change in between. And like that, you can add your holes on all the area that you want to have them. Of course, it's up to you to define the number of holes. And very sometime, like I did for this mesh, sometimes you can just hollow everything. It really depends on the model. And like I said, uh, you need to add some extra holes. On the other side. In fact, it really depends on the orientation of the model. Then if your orientation is upside down or in the good direction, you need to understand that in which way it will grow. Then on the part it will grow, it will be where the most support will be located. Then it's important to put them on area which where it will be easy to send and clean, etc. etc. Then let me just and after, of course, when you're done, you just need to generate your uh, your uh, sub tools. Let me just do that for everything. I will remove the cube, delete. You have all your sub tools. 
Of course, I didn't hollow, but you imagine the process the same for everything else. Uh, in my subtool, Boolean, I don't have subdivision, dynamic subdivision. Let just compute, and I'm looking at the chat. Hmm. Uh, yes, you can recognize some printer with the noise, especially SLA printers. <laughs> uh, FDM with the noise, with the fans, it's almost impossible. Uh, yes, sometimes, yes, the Ultimaker is doing a nice noise with some beeps and stuff like that. Um... Uh... Yeah, it's a big time server for, I mean, you can do all of this process with ZBrush 4R7, to be honest. I was doing all my split with Dynamesh and all these kind of things. But Dynamesh, you, you need to convert your model to something else. You may lose some details and stuff like that. With Boolean, you keep your model like it is. Then this is for me something great. And having this live Boolean just to preview, to slice. Come on, it's so convenient. Um, Polyfusion, why so many holes? I mean, it's not really some useful. I want, of course, to avoid some suction cups, uh, like I explained before you arrive, uh, which is very uh, important. Uh, then this is a result with the Boolean operation, then which it's exactly the same uh, uh, result. Um, I'm doing all these holes because I don't know if I will orient from the right side or the left side. Then if I just do one in the middle here, I may create some big suction cup based on the angle. Then by doing extra holes, I will minimize the problem. And there is nothing more annoying than orienting your model, creating some support, just to notice after that, ah, I have some suction cup, I need to clean that. And then you need to restart from scratch. Um, and yes, I'm abling the whole, uh, the whole diameter, definitely. Um, okay, uh, now for the export process, it was the same as before. Let me just recap. I won't do this export, but you imagine it will be uh, 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 the process. Uh, not the topology brush. And why one of my head is missing? I don't know. Anyway, I don't care. I don't know why my head is missing. It should be there. I have no idea why the head is missing. Anyway, I don't care. Uh, then for the export, like I said before, nothing very complex. I won't reduce the steps because I did already the last time some steps. With 3D Print Hub, the thing I'm doing first is going in the size options. And what I will check is checking the size for the, uh, the uh, all the tools. It's not an obligation because I did everything with the good scale at the beginning. Then it's not a big deal, but for all these kind of models, I prefer doing that way. Uh, and I don't use the selected subtool. This one is useful when you have a base with a specific sky, scale and you want to scale everything uh, based on that. Sorry, this B is very annoying. Um, then after that, you update size ratio and you wait a little bit because it process all the subtools. Also the hidden subtools, don't forget about that. Uh, I will look at that just after Gary. And now it asks you to select which size you want to use, which are mainly, you see, between millimeters and inches because it doesn't know which units you, you work in and after you have a conversion. If you are working with international units, <laughs> uh, most of the time this is the one which is on the top uh, right. And now, like I said before, all my values and units, I mean, everything need to be multiplied by 100 because I'm working with something which fits the brush sizes and then I need to increase to switch to millimeters and now this is uh, for the, 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 the height of the model this is not 4.36 but this is 436 then I remove my comma move and now everything has been scaled and what I need to do next is just exporting and then for exporting I'm using my options I will export what is visible of course 
as the separate files and I don't care about the poly painting. And then you click on this export button. And what I want to show you, because I showed that the last time, I will go through NetFab, uh, which is a, a paid and a free version. In fact, the trial doesn't expire for all the basic uh, uh, functionalities, just to see if there is no uh, fix for the models. And I know it will happen and I'm always checking my models. Okay, now that's done for the brush and I will switch to preform very quickly, just to explain some stuff. Like I said, I really want to show you everything. Uh, like before, this is my printer. I'm choosing what I want to do, but I will just load some files. And um, just one thing, you, rem you remember the base uh, of my model. Let me just go back. And I told you this base is way bigger than the printer volume size. Then let me switch back to preform and loading this base. Uh, this is what I have right now. And you see my model is in red. Why is it in red? Because it doesn't fit the printer. It, there is no way to print. And you see you have this warning uh, on this area. Um, then you see my model is way too big for my printer. But don't forget that because you can rotate your model, you can make it fit by just giving some angle. And now I'm able to print this model. You see? Then of course, it will work if you increase slightly your model, but the width, I have three extra centimeters in terms of width. And for the height, remember, it was exactly the good height of the model. And okay, you say for the height, you don't care if it's exactly the same size. No, because when you are printing, you need this support and this support will just push up your model because you need a base to just stick to the building platform. And if, let me show you that, the uh, final model because I need to uh, I prepare this model um, which was uh, base 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 where is base base no I don't save okay and you see when you are adding this support you have this extra gap which is added and at this stage you see now if I'm going just on the side my tolerance to be on top of the printer is very, very small, but I was able to print. And of course, inside of the brush, I scaled my model considering this possibility of the printer. And this is when I printed uh, Han Solo in the carbonite, uh, where it is. Which is that this one. Uh you see, this one, I, I already showed that, but you see, based on my Wacom pen, which is quite big, and the size is uh, 19 centimeters, which is way taller than what the printer is able to do. Then to do that, of course, I give, gave some angle to print and was fine. Ah, okay. Exactly, going to the limit, the printer can do it, just do it. Uh, let me just look at uh, the chat very quickly. Um, uh, this is your garage kit you're speaking about. Uh, I don't know that one. Do you know where you purchase this garage kit, if it's an official one or not? Yeah, T-System, this is circular, okay. I don't know. It's cute. Uh, from Maya Sensei. Okay, then you add from the artist directly. Perfect. This is what you need to do. The problem is to find this artist and having a way to purchase them. When you go to Wonder Festival, which will be uh, the, at the end of the, the month, uh, the last, um, this not this next Sunday, but the one after, uh, it will be very tricky uh, to find because some artists are just selling five, ten copies, and it's very difficult to wrap them. Um, okay. Um, now, uh, uh, Polyfusion, you have inside of the brush a check fix mesh. Uh, functionality, which is not designed for 3D printing. It's designed just to fix the error, which may be problematic for the brush. It won't fix the manifold edges and all this kind of stuff. In fact, 
if you have some 3D printing errors, if you're using the fixed mesh inside of the brush, it may create more errors for 3D printing. Then use Netfab, by far. Um, uh, Doug, no, no, it's just because I wanted to do a kind of environment around, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a very fun project. I really enjoyed that and I'm very happy with the result, to be honest. Just need some extra light and I need to finish uh, the side part for the, the, all the connectors and computer stuff, uh, the monitoring system. And like I said, I want to do a kind of big door uh, cover with that. <laughs> but I don't know if I will have the time. Um, uh, no, Gary, they sell to open American, but you need to go there anyway. Then uh, I mean, I never had this kind of issue. Um, Gary, Wonder Festival, then you can come if you want. Uh, to be honest, sorry for, for this side uh, 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 stuff, but like I said, I will be at Wonder Festival uh, in a week and a half. Uh, we'll have a booth uh, from Pixologic with presentations and a certain question. And we have so many artists now doing that. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my Twitter nickname is, let me type that on the chat, is uh, at Le Caramel. Um, and I'm following a bunch of Japanese and sometimes I'm retreating, retreating their work. And during the Wonder Festival, I should send on uh, on Instagram something I'm not using that much. I should use, use that much, but trying to take some photos. Anyway, I will post on uh, Ultra.toys, my American website, English website, uh, some feedback for the Wonder Festival. Um, no, Polyfusion is not difficult to import to Europe for these artists. They don't know to export and so many artists don't even know that people in Europe or US are interested in their art. You can't imagine how many Japanese artists who are in the manga world, illustration world, don't even know that they are so well known or so many people are interested in their work. It's uh, not bad. Anyway, and yes, there is a one day license rule. In fact, they allow it to sell licensed stuff for one day with the agreement of the license owner. They just sell just one day. But outside of the Wonder Festival, if they want to sell, they need to have the agreement. That's why it's easy to find uh, uh, um, original work, but not licensed work. And you see my to be, I won't sell it, but I, it would be fine to present during the Wonder Festival. And for the little story, we are doing a special event, which name is ZBrush Merge uh, in Japan, uh, which will be live stream, but only in, in Japanese, where we'll have Square Enix and um, uh, Platinum Games, who will do a presentation of how they did the characters and of course to be from Nier Automata. And perhaps I will give them this figurine <laughs> uh, for the presentation. I don't know yet, but um, I'm really waiting for that. <laughs> Uh, I'm lucky to be honest. Okay, let's go back to my stuff. Uh, very quickly, um, let me finish with multiple parts. Deleted, not saving. Now, if you want to buy something, Gary, you need to find some people who are buying for you and then after sending back to you. And uh, it's uh, maybe tricky. Okay, then you see this is multiple part I exported and I prepare. Then let's just look about that one. And to be honest, I already checked the orientation of the model, but what I need to do is just the support. And for the support, we have a function which creates for you automatically the support. And to be honest, most of the time it's working fine. Then you see just before, sorry, I have 77 milliliters of resin. Now, if I'm doing my support, I have uh, oops, sorry. 77.7. Now 84.56 milliliters. Then just the support by themselves are adding quite some resin. And of course, the bigger the model is, the more resin, I mean, support will have, and then the more resin it will use. And sometimes you have a lot more resin used for the support than the model. Then sometimes hollowing the model doesn't worth it because just the support by themselves will use more resin. Yeah, it's tricky. Um, now it will be streamed just on a Japanese channel, sorry. Uh, but we should just record everything uh, for the live stream. Now, what I wanted to explain with just that and nothing else, you can click on this edit button and then you see all the connection points of this support. And you see, this is quite a lot, meaning that as soon as you will remove all of these supports, 
you will need to send everything. You need to cut and send. And that's a lot. Then the more points you have, then you can say, okay, now let's use the slicer on the side and see what is happening. Okay, it's growing, growing, growing. But why do I need this support? I mean, there is no overhang and no big gaps, no, uh, no big angles. They are useless. Let's remove them and just keep what is needed. Let's just say, okay, what I need is, of course, the ones at the beginning. Let me zoom in like that. Okay, this is great. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, now I know it's enough attached. Let's remove everything else like that. Okay, woo. Let's be crazy. I'm removing everything that, that way. Okay, I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. That one and that one. And say, okay, now I apply the new support. This is what you have. In fact, technically speaking, it may print or maybe not. Yeah, that's a lot of trial and errors. In fact, this, uh, uh, this support. And sometimes you, you learn the hard way, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, but if you do that, first thing to do is to check with just the, the, the slicer. And then you can see everything growing. And your best friend is your up and down, uh, your page up and page down keys to see what is happening. And you see just at this stage, in fact, I didn't remove any support, but I have this part growing just alone without being connected to, I mean, connected to nothing. And meaning that if you don't have a support, you have this part just sticking to the uh, resin, uh, resin layer at the bottom of the resin tank. And it may not stick to something else and may, may start to have a failure locally on your model. And you need to have a support for that. Then let's fix that just after. And then you can grow, you can grow, you can grow. Ah, yeah, I forgot that one. Okay, this one needs to grow from somewhere else. You can continue, can continue. You see this one, same problem. And okay, everything else, in fact, should be okay. Then okay. Now, Thomas, what you can do is edit your support. <coughs> Trying to see here where it's going. Oh, you see, this is, I think, this area. Then you need to add a support and now, okay, it will grow perfectly. Then now this part has been fixed. I need to look about when it will start to grow. Okay, it starts to grow here and that one here. Okay, now if I apply and save, in the theory, everything should be fine. But you see you have a lot of red everywhere. First thing is because your angle start to be very uh, close to the zero angle. Uh, you don't have enough angle. In fact, it's okay, but you may start to have big, long layers adding together, then it may be tricky. And each time it will peel, I oh, mean peeling in, in, in that way, you may have a lot, of, a lot of force applied to it. Then adding more support will give more force, more strength to the model each time you have the peeling. And another thing is, that's why you had all of these items. And another thing, sorry if it's a lot of theory stuff, but if you understand that, when you will prepare your model for 3D printing, you will understand all these kind of things. You will be able to anticipate these kind of things since the, be the beginning from the design by itself, where you will split your model, where you need to add support. Then you need to add more support because you see, the model, it starts to print here and from the layer, let's say 100. And until a layer 142 for 42 layers it will just be connected to, to this single point at this stage and each time it will move up and down for unsticking the layer a lot of strength will be applied at a stage where you see it will need to unstick, unstick all this area then it will move it will just force just to unstick everything and being connected with just this small point then the risk is this point is too small and then enough, it won't have enough strength just to keep everything in place. Then it will just detach and this part will just stick to the build platform. And this is where you start to have your model unsticking to the support and then falling in the, uh, the print and then making everything failing. Because if you start to have this stuff falling on the model, it may move around, it may make over part breaking, etc. Then you will have a failed print. And that's why it's important to, let me clear and 
redo everything. It's important to consider that your printer, let me edit, is not putting all these points to make you spending too much resin. Okay, sometimes you can remove some of them, but most of the time they are useful. And that's why it's important to see, okay, sometime, uh, oh, I don't see the point anymore like before. You remember this point which was growing alone. Don't forget that right now I'm printing, let me just cancel, with the gray resin at 0 0.100 microns resolution. But for this model, in fact, I will print it at 25 microns, which means for the same thickness, I will need to print four times more layers. Then now by doing that, editing again, now you see I have less, I need to press more to see my model growing. And I know that I will need to have just one point on this location. And by changing the resolution, you will see that I think here, let me see. Okay. You see, this is very small, but you see this area here for one, two layers, three layers, there is nothing attached to it. If we just grow without being connected to something else, then it may stick to the resin tank. While this support here, in fact, is useless. Then it's important to move this one here to be sure it will be connected. And then, oh, this one as well while this one is useless. Then you'll be sure that everything is connected to the build platform. Then sometimes the software is doing mistakes. I told you that the last during the last stream. It's important to check layers by layers about all this kind of connection. And you see, now you have at least four points before connecting to that one. Okay. Now last thing to do, to, to consider. You see, you have now all these points here this one in fact doesn't help to grow to make growing the model they just give more strength to the model when it's sticking to the uh, uh, peeling because you see you have quite some large area then each time it will start to stick it's a big part to unstick to the model and then you will need to have all this support to give some strength the problem is these supports are on the visible area of the model and if i start to send all this part it will be visible then you can just move them inside where it will be easy to send your model. You see, they don't help to, the model to grow, but by doing that, it will be less risky. And you see, if you are in the front of your model, you don't see the support at all because it, they are not visible. And all of these supports, you can just move them inside. Of course, it doesn't prevent to check that there is no path which are growing together. And you see, it's very important to check and sometimes just moving a little bit from few pixels, make your print easier to send, easier to clean, or just ensure that you will have a successful, successful, successful print. And what you have right now in the printer, in fact, this is this series of, uh, of model. Let me reload. Uh, do, 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 base cut part two. No, I don't want to save. And for each model, one one, I need to check everything. And you see, I need to check. I'm checking that. Uh, no, sorry. Um, this is another one. Sorry, not that one. Uh, Anyway, I'm checking everything that it will connect to some supports. And for that, you need to learn. And you see, no, this is this one. For the panties, I could have printed that on the other side. Meaning that, okay, I want to print. Why not printing that way? Like that, I have more support attached. The problem is, if you want to print, because of this small design here, you need to have one support for each bump like that to make each bump growing while being that way you can hide that inside and you don't need to have support for this kind of design and you see for you remember for the arms why i'm splitting that just to be sure that i will have just the control on this part and i can or i can orient change the orientation of this part without being affected by the shoulder part by itself and then i have more control and you see in fact, this is why another reason I really enjoy Formlabs with Preform, this software, 
is just look at the design of these supports. You have other software which are doing supports. Uh, of course, you have very expensive one, but you have this uh, uh, um, uh, open source one or free software like uh, uh, the one from Autodesk. I, I just forgot the name, sorry. Um, which are, are, are not that bad, but you see, they are able to go around the model to put support until this level which is great because you don't have support in between. Why a lot of software are just able to go vertically or giving some angles, but not doing this kind of design. And uh, it's, it's very well done, to be honest. Okay, and just one file to finish. Um, skirt. Okay, you see this one is pretty big and I'll give some angles and you see the number of supports that you have, so many supports, but they are needed to give some strength to unpeel everything. Unfortunately, you have no way to remove them. I could reduce a little bit the density. It could be done. And if I did the support, I've been careful to put as much as possible, you see, more, more on the boundary of the model because it was more outside at the beginning. And I need to spend more time because I did that for a lot of parts, but not everything, you see. That's a lot of support. Uh, you see, I have 56 milliliters with the support. If I clear everything, I have 23. I have more than twice the volume of resin just with support. You see, 23, 56. Then that's quite a lot. Unfortunately, there is no way to uh, to um, not convert, but to um, uh, ah, uh, recycle the support. As soon as it, it, it's printed, no way to change that. Um, okay. Um, uh, yeah, I understand. I agree with you, Polyfusion, that the angle and stuff like that, it shouldn't change when you want to edit the support. I agree with you. Um, Uh, yeah, for, for the support, Gary is asking if I can change the support size. In fact, the, the pillars are the same, but for the mesh by itself, the supports, you have this uh, size of the contact point, which is by default 0 .0 0 0.6 millimeters. You can make them smaller and up to 0 0.4 in point four, it's okay. If you want to go lower, you have a small warning, say, ah, it may be risky. In fact, you can use very small one when you have, you remember for the, the panty, the small uh, connection point, which was not at the good place on the, um, on the stitching of the, the panty. I had to move them. Then for that one, and this is what I did, in fact, I did very small point because I need to have support just for one or two layers three, four, not that much, then you can reduce the size. But when I'm printing some model which may be very long, like the arm like that, I'm in fact, at the base, I'm using bigger support, like 0 0.9, eventually one millimeter thick uh, support to be sure it will have a strong connection uh, on the model. Then you can play with that in real time. Um, Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Uh... Okay, then now let's move to the other part. Let me just switch on the light. Uh, for that, I may switch to another microphone because I'm concerned that I will f just, uh, I won't face the microphone and I hope the audio, sorry, the audio won't be as good as it is right now. Um, okay, uh, let me hide all of that. Um, Okay, do you do you still still up? Do you still me here here okay or is it still okay for the audio? Just let me know. 
if the volume is still the same. It's too low. Uh, hold on. Uh, is it okay now? You have some echo? Uh, I have no feedback, then it's very difficult for me to... Uh... Yeah, sorry, this is my headset, but... Uh... Uh... I can use the webcam uh, audio, but I'm afraid that it will be very, very noisy. Uh, okay, uh, let me switch to the other monitor. Okay, then. Okay, oops, sorry. I don't have a lot of room for my legs. Okay, then uh, let me know if, you, if it's still okay for the audio, okay? Yeah, uh, I don't have something else and, um, okay, L let's do something. Let's do something, because I don't like that. Uh, and now, is it better now or not? Because I switched back to the good microphone, but I'm very far from the microphone. And my voice, in fact, is going on the other direction. What do you prefer? Before or now? No, yes, no. Yeah, I have some legs! <laughs> I have some feet as well. <laughs> what do you prefer for the audio? Just let me know. Yeah, hairy legs. <laughs> Then it was better before or better now? Hmm? Yeah, I can't move my main microphone, that's a problem. No, same, no. Okay, let's go back to the headset and Okay, then, um, what you see right now, I have multiple stuff uh, here. Uh, yes, I have some Tamiya tape, which is the best one. Uh, I have a laser, uh, which is, uh, as you can see here, this is a UV laser that I'm using to glue some parts for some prints. Uh, when I want to attach, I can put some resin a little bit and then using this laser, which is a UV laser uh, to uh, cure the resin locally. I'm not using that on a daily basis, but times to time, this is really useful for small parts. And in fact, the resin is the best way to glue some parts better than uh, um, the super glue type resin. Okay, I have some small sizer that I bought in Japan. You can't imagine how much tools they have in Japan. This is, ah, my God. Uh, I have this kind of small tools, uh, which are not really uh, uh, cutters, but uh, which are small knives, but it's it's very sharp and it's great to remove some type of support. I use that more for FDM prints, but sometimes this is very useful. Uh, and I can give some links online. I can give, of course, the name of the tool, but uh, uh, I never f found that one online. This is just that I'm buying in Japan, and uh, I'm sorry. Uh, of course. Um, a kind of knife, uh, which is very sharp like a razor, but this is uh, a flat one, which is great for to push as soon as you remove some support. Uh, very dangerous. Of course, some uh, squeezer, Windsor, I don't remember the name. And this uh, uh, small, uh, uh, sorry, I'm lacking of vocabulary, but uh, uh, just to cut small things. You can buy that on online. I, I bought that one on Amazon. Uh, it's not that cheap. You have very cheap one. In fact, with the printer, they provide a cheap one, but just 
just garbage. This one is way better, more comfortable. Um, then, now the good thing about removing this support, uh, and I hope the video is good for you. Uh, you see, that's why I'm always checking the orientation. And I don't know if you see that, but there is some scratch here on this area. And nowhere else, but you have them a little bit here. Because when you are cleaning your model in uh, the IPA alcohol, uh, you are shaking everything. And the resin is still very soft and still needs some extra curing and it gives some marks on, on the model. And you need to be very careful. And you see sometimes you have some supports like that which are connected to the model. Do you see just one point? Uh, oh, focus, focus. Come on, focus, focus. Okay. Uh, you see, ah, it's very difficult to focus. Um, then, of course, the more you have on this kind of parts, the more annoying it will be after to sand. But if it's flat areas like that, it's very easy to sand. The problem is when you have this kind of models that way, and you need to clean this small support which are inside. And that one, it's, it's it can be very tricky because all these parts are very thin and then can break very easily. Um, then let's start with this one. I, I won't do it. Then I'm using this uh, small uh, tool, just going around. I'm always be very careful when I'm on the boundary of the model because uh, the resin is a little bit brittle. And uh, if it's too much brittle, you can have some parts of the resin which may be falling or breaking for the model. But at this stage, to be honest, don't forget that I will have the skirt on top and um, the apron. Then even if I have some mark here, it won't be visible. Even I can even send that without any kind of issues. Uh, yeah, a flush cutter player. Okay, thank you, <laughs> Polyfusion. Yeah, I'm lacking a vocabulary. Then you just go all around. And this is a step where you need to take your time. Don't go too fast. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Put some glasses. Uh, uh, protect your, 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 your eyes. Because when you are breaking small parts like that, sometimes you have a little bit of parts which are just jumping uh, to your face. And be very, very careful. Uh, when you are manipulating the resin or IP alcohol, use some gloves, protecting gloves. Be very, very careful. I mean, this is very, not that uh, uh, aggressive stuff, but well, it's not 100% natural. <laughs> it's not organic. Okay, then, oh, sorry, I was a bit out of camera. Then you can remove, if you want, some of them in between just to have a better access to other parts. This is where I'm using these uh, scissors which are way longer to go inside. And you will see that I just break a part of the model, which is not a big deal, but just to show that this is very important to be uh, uh, um, careful by doing small parts one by one. It's not a, a, a run, this is not a competition, uh, it's not a, a race, sorry. And now you see I am able to unplug everything else. And you see this is what I have right now. I just have this extra stuff which is inside and I can try to stretch. And of course, all the support, you see some support still inside. It's not a big deal. You don't need to, to, to look at them. Then this is where you can use this kind of uh, knife like that and trying to push slightly just to clean. And by doing that, you have uh, you are just avoiding to, uh, I mean, to reduce the amount of, uh, sorry, I was out of camera. It's not very easy to work with the webcam on top of, of me. I'm not used to work that way. Yeah, this type of razor, I, I never, I mean, I just found that in Japan. I'm, I'm used to the classical uh, 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 angle uh, 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 blade, not that one, but I find that very convenient, especially on these kind of flat areas. You see. <laughs> that way. And I don't know if you see that, but just 
here have a small part which just break because you see this is very thin and when I remove my support I did that perhaps not so slowly on this area and then just break some part and since it's a key to connect my model it's not a big deal but when you try to do that on a model uh, uh, where let's say it could be this kind of part just you see these small uh, uh, details uh, it may be problematic then at this stage you see my model is pretty clean you see a little bit the uh, the layers but not that much and again a little uh, it's a bit of sending will fix the problem and I will do the sending just in in few minutes because I bring some stuff to send uh, then let's do that one let me close that because it's very dangerous uh, let me look at the questions um... Uh, uh, for the laser uh, polyfusion, uh, I just look at uh, uh, 405 uh, nanometers uh, UV laser and I bought that one, I think in China, uh, but I think it should be uh, easily fine. But you need to, to find something which is powerful enough. My problem was more to find a powerful laser and this one is not that powerful. Um, enough to, uh, to, to, to cure the resin, but I would prefer something more powerful, at, at least twice more powerful. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you need to show me this tool, Polyfusion. Uh, when you say you remove the base, I use a little uh, Japanese saw to cut support just above the, bus, the base first. Um, yeah, Gary, you, you know, uh, in fact, when you are, uh, uh, I mean, you, when you visit Japan, you see what is it uh, to, to do model kits. I mean, I did model, uh, model kits a lot when I was younger. I did a lot of kits, a lot of different things. I did some kit bashing, a lot of, a lot of tools, a lot of things. But come on, the first time I've been in a real uh, model kit store in Japan, come on, <laughs> it's not the same world at all. <laughs> the tools they have, the, 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 the quality of the work they're doing, and uh, that's just crazy. All the hobby stuff that they do in Japan is just on the other, on another level. It's uh, there is no comparison. This time I'm breaking small parts to have a better access to uh, the other stuff and you see this kind of of um, of player or cutter player i don't know the name uh, i'm i may soon change it because it's still cutting fine but not as much as it was before and i prefer to spend an extra 20 euros let's say 25 dollars uh, to buy a new one which will be very sharp than just breaking some part of my model And because I didn't cure my resin, it's it's still a little bit soft. Then it's easier to cut that way. Uh, for this part, I need to be very careful. Sorry, I, I went a little bit out of the camera. Sorry, let me just move my seat. Ah, it's not very easy. <laughs> this is the first one for me, just to use the webcam like that. I have just another one which is just below. Uh, this is tricky to, to, to clean that. And what you don't see is, you see, when you want to send this kind of small just point, you don't see that, but you have very small point here. This is very, very tricky. That's why you need to have the good tools. And on this location, it will be visible. And uh, it's that's why I don't want to put support, but I had to put a support. If I put a support here, it's because I had some a little bit of overhang, even few layers, but enough to be problematic. Then you go around. 
and these supports all of them are connected to each other that's why it's not that easy to to remove them uh, easily okay but you see straight out of the printer it's already pretty nice there is no comparison with what you can do with the FDM printer, at least for the size and resolution. And I did everything in 25 microns. And you remember some stream I said you need to increase the details, the, the, to contrast your details. And I think I didn't do that enough. If I had to redo the model, perhaps I would do it in the future, but I will increase especially the faults of the model. Okay, now what is inside? Let me just go around. I don't want to break things because this is still very thin anyway. I, I won't uh, uh, remove everything, but at least I will do the head as well. Perhaps not the hairs, but... Uh, okay, now I did everything outside. I don't care if I break inside. I think I just have some small holes. Let me use my scissors. Of course, you put a lot of stuff all around. I mean, a lot of supports which are falling on the floor and you need to clean after. It's a little bit of mess. You can just move that way. Now, like I did before, let me clean a little bit. And you see inside, I've been very careful about not having supports going inside on this area. Because if you want to just to sand and stuff like that, it can be very tricky to, to access these kind of areas. That's why you see I did before, I did a small gap. Because by doing this gap, I'm able to um, uh, to have more freedom in terms of sending. If I don't want to send too much, or or if my sending is not uh, so clean, and you see this kind of of tool is very convenient for doing that. <laughs> and if I'm checking right now, and I hope it will be okay. You see, now you have the assembly going that way. Then there is no issue. Of course, I need to send because I have some uh, some difference, some gap. And you see, oh, that's not the good thickness. Don't forget that I will have on top the skirt and the apron on top. Then it's not a, a big deal. But I need to send. Then about send. Oh, let me just do the face, and after I will speak about sending. Uh, that's why I have some water here. <laughs> which is not an obligation, but it can be uh, useful. You see the, the ears, I'm very, very careful. I don't want to break anything. Same for all these parts. I don't know why I have some support here. Why did I put some support on this area? I shouldn't have the need. Oh, another thing is uh, I'm doing all this kind of stuff because, I mean, I don't have the constraint. I thought that in in the past, but um, I don't. I want uh, uh, mold or this kind of things. If you want to mold, of course, you have way more constraints uh, that you need to consider. And fortunately, I don't care. Let me remove that. These areas will be, oops, I've been too far. I break some part. You see a little bit, I don't know if it's visible, but I have the hairs on top then. It's not a big deal, but I don't like that. <laughs> you know, when you want to go inside, it can be very, very tricky. Ah. Uh, 
like I said before, it's not a race. Don't go too fast because this is where you do mistakes. And I don't want to wait extra hours for nothing. Okay. Then you see all this kind of stuff, this extra resin. This is just for the trash. Nothing you can do, you see, this is quite some money at this stage. Okay. I'm very, very careful with that because the face, of course, is very visible. And I prefer removing a little bit and after sending that removing too much and after having the need of, to, uh, of using some putty, the Tamiya one, of course. You see, go that way if I put, oops. That's why you are using some tape. This one is some taping. Uh, um, ah, this is some masking tape, which is very, very good because you use that just to protect some areas when you want to, let's say, to paint. You move all around that way, multiple parts, and it's very, very protective. And after, I just need to remove uh, like some regular tape. And you can use it uh, as well just to connect some parts. And you see the size start to be already uh, quite big if you compare to my hand. You see. Then it should be nice, I hope. <laughs> Okay, now about sending. Let me just remove that. You have multiple schools, multiple techniques. I don't say that I have the best one. Oh, sorry, I forgot for these tools. I'm using that the same way as that one. But the thing is, this is way, way smaller than for just working on small areas. And I have multiple size, I have four different sizes for that one. Let's say you want to uh, just to remove some small part inside, you see, this is way more convenient than the big one. Okay, about sending, let me, uh, where is my bag? Oh, come on, come on, where are you, bag, bag, bag? Still some Japanese stuff, <laughs> sorry. You, you need to keep in mind that, uh, of course, you can find, I guess, this kind of tool, you can find that in good uh, uh, hobby stores, uh, model kit stores. Uh, this kind of tools, to be honest, I don't know. I never thought that before. Uh, for that, this is sanding sponges. Uh, you can use a regular sanding paper which is, uh, uh, of course, working great. But sponges like that, this is uh, uh, very soft. This is less aggressive to the model. And it's more easier to manipulate. To be honest, I really love that. Then you have the 3M1, which is a brand. I never found that in Europe, at least. I know some store in US are selling that. Uh, and then I'm using this uh, God Hand Tools, which is the name of the brand, God Hand, God Hand uh, Tools, which are very small uh, uh, sanding uh, sponges. I love that one. You see, this is multiple one. You have six, uh, 600 grits, 240 grits, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, 1000 grits, and I have a lot of them. You see, I have a full bag of stuff that I'm bringing from Japan. Each time I'm going to Japan, uh, I'm bringing more stuff. Uh, you see this one, the 240, they are way thicker, 
which is great when you are doing some uh, very round surfaces uh, while this one this is the same but this is less uh, uh, thinner then you have multiple thickness um, you see for the 3m i have fine ultra fine and uh, super ultra and fine then oops, sorry uh, ultra you see then uh, and for the price this is 300 yens which is uh, um, 72 euros roughly then uh, less than three dollars and for this kind of things then it's really worth the money um, anyway this is many sending stuff that I have I have a lot a lot of them uh, let, let me just find the and of course I have one uh, 100 and uh, 120 which is great for the big big part of the models uh, anyway um, then when I'm using the fine one which is one I'm using the most is when I want to do the big part of the job uh, let's say below you want to send some part like that which I want because this is already a clean one uh, this is very convenient you see I want to clean the problem is if I'm cleaning too much with that I need to be very careful because uh, I have the boundary here then uh, you need to go that to do that very uh, smoothly you see you can pinch that very easily this is really really great and when you are working with this kind of uh, of sending stuff don't forget that you need to go from a, a large uh, a sending uh, value I mean a large um, um, a small value to 100 something like that uh, 100 grits and after you refine and need to go to perhaps 200 and 500 and and 800 and a thousand don't go to just a big one and after a, a very small one except for small details uh, so I didn't look at the chat recently sorry um, where's my mouse um, and do you have to wash your model before painting and painting and sending for sending not really because at this stage for the sending I will do no it's fine but after sending of course you must uh, remove the dust of sending and you see for sending I'm using that one but we'll see after that I will use some water just to send uh, uh, some some part then I, I'm very you see carefully just going around the idea is to make that as smooth as possible uh, also because I will connect my two items together then if I want to have a nice match it's very important to, to smooth another reason as well is because I will glue everything and because I will glue all of that uh, if I have too much gap the glue will be less effective then you see I, I forgot to remove some support then it's faster to use this tool to remove this extra support than trying to send uh, a lot your model and don't forget that your sending material is not eternal you need to replace it times to times uh, for something which work way better go around if needed and again this type of process takes some time if you really want to have a nice nice result you can spend hours in sending I mean it's way too long that's why if you can put your support inside and not outside of your model then it's way faster and uh, easier to uh, using let's say more roof tools but you see I still see the support on the uh, yeah focus 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 no it doesn't want to focus Yeah, you don't see the uh, you see now you see the, the, the we still see the dots about the support but they are closer to the surface and, uh, then if I want to use something else let's use this these god hands uh, sponges which is a little bit more expensive to be honest but it's worth the money you see this one is 120 uh, grits 
and this is in fact uh, uh, the, the, the sending aspect is is bigger than one that this one. I think this one is something like 200, 240, something like that. This one is 120. And if I want to clean better this one, that way, it's uh, it's better. And why I have some water because you can use some water and when you are doing that you will have less frictions it will be less aggressive and as well all the sanding the powder and all these kind of things will just stick to uh, to the model then water is a great thing and you can do that with any kind of uh, sanding paper in fact this is advised to, to, to do that with a wet, um, um, wet sanding. Okay, that way. Then you can use your finger, you, and you can feel, in fact, with your finger if it's still okay or not. Then I just go around doing that flat. start to become now way nicer than it was before. Another reason why you need to switch from uh, uh, a small value for your grids to a bigger value, mean from very thick to very thin, um, is that by doing that, you will avoid some scratches. This kind of very uh, uh, large sending uh, points, I don't know the name, sorry. Um, they are just scratching your model. Then, if you don't use smaller, I mean, more thinner uh, uh, sanding paper, you will have uh, uh, all this scratch being visible. Then, on this part, I don't care. But you see, I need to sand a little bit on this area. If I use this kind of large one and not anything else, I will see a lot of scratch on my model. Then, for me, the bottom part is, let's say, done, at least for the presentation. Uh, perhaps not a little bit here. Okay, it's, it's way better that way. Then I will use now something, perhaps uh, not 400, 600. Then each time I go to Japan, I bring tons of that. Uh, okay, it's a bit of water. Then, uh, sorry, not that one. Then I will just go around because I know I've been working on this area with the larger one. Okay, then I will use the same one just to clean the small support which are on this area. And when I'm doing my sending, of course there are multiple schools, but I'm doing small circles like that. And I'm doing some kind of variations in pressure, like you're doing with your pen when you are uh, uh, cleaning your model. You're applying more or less pressure on your model than the same for the sanding. And to be honest, I don't feel any more. <laughs> I don't feel any more where I was working, which is in a way great. I'm doing the same on this area. Same around here. And you see 60 is already thin, not very thin, but thin enough to uh, to polish. In fact, most of the time I'm between the 240 and the 60. And at the end, I'm using the 1000 uh, to really finish. The problem is the 1000 that it's, uh, I mean, you are killing the sending paper way too fast. Um, uh, yeah, nail art stuff, yeah, but... Uh, um, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the chat. Um, uh, uh, Kutapis, ah, sorry, you can't hear me. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, exactly. The resin is toxic. That's why, in fact, using uh, white paper, white sanding techniques will, re will reduce uh, a lot uh, the fume 
uh, or the small uh, uh, particles of resin you still have, but less at least. Uh. And yes, having some mask is way better. Of course, it depends how much you stand. If you're spending your day standing, you really need to be very careful of your health. Uh, okay. Around, and I need to fix a little bit what I have here. And this kind of fixing is very, very tricky. I, I feel that with my nail, but it's very difficult to see then. Perhaps I will use one of my small tool first. So it's a big mess right now around because I, I'm, uh, um, I'm doing for the presentation. I'm not always working with everything like that all around me. I don't know if, let me know if it's very interesting for you or I'm doing that for nothing. <laughs> but I really wanted to show uh, the whole process. And not only the brush, which is of course the big part of the process. But I think it's interesting to see all of these extra steps. And you see these small tubes are very great to carve, just to support. Okay, now let me check. This one is fine, this is fine here. I need to clean just the keys. For the keys, I can use my 120 grit uh, sanding sponge because it's not a visible part. I just want to remove all the, the small marks uh, left by the supports that I removed. That's why the 120 is great for that. It lets you walk very quickly. Okay. And now because I use multiple, I mean, uh, some sanding paper here, and even around, I will use my 1001. I'm opening a new one Why I already opened multiple of them. Anyway. And for this one, I will go just slightly all around. This one is perfect to remove the small visible layers. You can even go all around your model. It's very soft and it will clean all, all these visible layers without really killing the details of your model. Of course, you, can go, you can't go deep inside your details, but uh, enough to uh, having a nicer result. I mean, I can't use any more sunning papers now. <laughs> I prefer by, by far these uh, sanding sponges. See, by just doing that, I'm removing some, uh, just a little bit the visible layers, which are almost not visible. And when you are doing that, in fact, I'm just doing a little bit because after, when I will be done, I will use my cans of Tamiya uh, painting. Let me just grab one. Uh, this Tamiya, uh, Tamiya primer uh, paint, and you see this is a fine one. You have the regular one and the fine one. I'm using the fine one, which is very, very thin, uh, fine, sorry. Um, and you do just one layer, very thin layer of, uh, of painting uh, on your model, then it will fill 
all of these small layers and after you just do a little bit of sanding on top of that then you will just keep the painting inside of the layer and it will unify the surface and after you can apply your uh, layer of painting if you want um... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your comment, Gary. Yeah, you can't uh, you can't switch with me, unfortunately. But uh, to be honest, I I, I would um, yeah this one yeah this is Laker based if I remember. I'm not sure about this one, but it contains a lot of uh, butanol, butanol, uh, uh, acetate, acetate, uh, acetone based. Um, then, uh, yeah, no, this one is, is really fantastic, but of course, use that outside. On my side, I'm using, uh, I have um, um, a kind of painting station where I have a kind of uh, a ventilation system, which is great when I'm using my airbrush. I'm using that, uh, of course, with uh, the can. It's better than working outside because outside, if you have too much wind, you are spending, I mean, using half of your can just outside of the, the model to paint, and then you're losing some painting. Up. Anyway, uh, then for that one, I think I have nothing to do, just a little bit of uh, going around. Sometimes you feel more the layers than others. And that's why I really love these sponges because the sanding paper is very uh, uh, hard. I mean, this is a, 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 a very thick paper which breaks and you don't have the freedom of, of sanding like you have with this kind of tool. And again, I'm not trying to remove all the layers. You don't really see the difference. I'm sorry for the webcam uh, view, but uh, enough to reduce at least uh, uh, the layers without losing the details and uh, and after like I said with the, uh, a single layer of primer color it will be just perfect you see just in uh, you should see the layer come on focus you see by sending you see a little bit the layers uh, on the model and in fact because this is of this white color it's increasing uh, this aspect I need to send to wet a little bit but in fact the aspect that we'll have will be closer to what we have when it's wet come on focus Sorry, I have some hard time focusing. Yeah, sorry. Okay. And now, in fact, I have less gap. Now that I sanded both uh, uh, parts, I have a gap, but it's slightly moving, but not that much, and which is what I was looking for. Okay. Then uh, that's all for today. Uh, let me check at the chat. Um, yeah, in fact, if you're in Europe, why not one day you're doing a kind of uh, <laughs> garage kit, uh, figure in event and all these kind of things. Um, Yeah, this is very important, Gary, what you're saying about uh, just smells and uh, and vapors, of course, being very careful. In fact, I'm kind of, I know that I have the Form 2 printer, which is just at um, less than a meter than me right now, um, being so close to me because, uh, yeah, there is uh, the resin, which is not that far. Unfortunately, I have no other way and my office is very, very small. Uh, then I have some concern with that, but unfortunately, <laughs> I have no choice. Um, anyway, uh, let me just finish to look at the chat. Uh, okay. 
Okay, gentlemen, I think that's all for today. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for being with me again. Um, for the next week, which will be, I think, next Sunday, uh, it will be my last stream before at least a couple of weeks after, because again, I will be in Japan and I won't be able to stream. Um, I don't know yet what I will do. Um, of course, I will show you a progress of uh, this work and I hope it will be finished at least with a gray color and having the assembly done. Um, perhaps it will be a very short stream just to making you aware of, uh, of the progress. Uh, after that, and probably when I will be back from Japan, I will do a cosplay uh, uh, theme based uh, stream where we should create for 3D printing again, but FDM printing uh, the Kylo Ren uh, uh, um, uh, mask. Uh, but for the full head, uh, this kind of thing, then um, I don't know yet. Perhaps I will prepare the, st the, 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 the first step during the, the next stream. I don't know yet. Anyway, um, thank you very much. Uh, I won't be able to follow my stream because I need to do something else now. Uh, just after, anyway, uh, I will stream probably uh, during this week. Um, perhaps this sending process and all these kind of things uh, online, I don't know yet. Anyway, you can follow on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash polysculpt, uh, which is the same as my website, polysculpt.com. Um, Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy this stream so far. Uh, you've learned some stuff. Feel free to send me your questions uh, by email, which is thomas at uh, or comment on YouTube. Uh, and uh, thank you again. And I don't know what is the next stream. I didn't look at that. Uh, then anyway, see you later. Follow us on ZBrush Live, on Facebook, on Twitter, everywhere. Uh, and see you soon. Bye bye.